Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. My name is Smooth Operative, and you are watching Time Capsule. It is the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and showcase awesome speedruns of games released in the same year. It is so nice to see you all again. Thank you for showing up tonight. I'm super excited about tonight's episode. We've got a 2016 games focus with some of my favorites featuring speedruns of Dark Souls 3 and later Mirror's Edge Catalyst. But of course, before we begin, we must cover the announcements. So first off, Summer Games Done Quick will be live from Minneapolis, Minnesota, June 30th through July 6th. You can visit gamesdonequick.com for more information about the event. And that being said, Games Done Quick is looking for a new mainline event volunteer coordinator as well as a host co-coordinator. So if you do enjoy our mainline speedrunning events, check out the job responsibilities and apply at gamesdonequick.com slash jobs. GDQ Hotfix is also incredibly proud to present its first Asian American and Pacific Islander American Heritage Month celebration. You can join us May 18th and 19th for two full days of showcases and speedruns to celebrate AAPI heritage. Submissions are currently open until April 21st, and the schedule will be released on April 29th. You can use the command exclamation mark AAPI in our Twitch chat for more information on how to submit your speedrun. But with that said, everyone, we are ready to roll. Here to show off a speed run of Dark Souls 3, please welcome Matt Apocalypse. Hi, Matt. Hi, Tippy. Thanks for having me tonight. <laughs> of course. So give us the rundown. Um, well, we're gonna we're going to fight all the bosses in Dark Souls 3 in a timely manner. We're gonna, we're gonna be doing big yeah. speed today. We're gonna <laughs> be uh, you know, doing some little glitches that throw me out of bounds, give me goofy cameras that make me do some funny things. I'm going to be spinning around, making the game confused. I'm going to be uh, deactivating <laughs> AIs. It's it, it's a great run. It's a great run. Uh, I love Dark Souls 3. I loved it casually. Nice. Um, and now I just speed run it for hours and hours and hours every day, <laughs> every week. Well, we are very... We are very excited to see your progress. And you have a guest with you today here to commentate. Uh, hi, Hemlocks. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. It's nice to have you both here. Um, so, Matt, whenever you are feeling ready and comfortable, you can give us the countdown. Yeah, and I appreciate Hemi being here because um, this game is uh, got some got some pretty difficult things and... I tend to go very quiet when I have to focus on doing these goofy tricks here and there. But, um... Got, got to remind you of things, too, I oh imagine. Oh, yeah, I, I did cool. tell him, because uh, I usually run at um, semi-optimal. I wouldn't say fully optimal yet, but uh, uh, it requires a hot, hot fix. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice, got it, got it. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> she's blue. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so yeah, Hemi's gonna help me out with that. So this speed run is typically ran on a downpatched version of the game. It's patch 1.12, which is the original release patch for the second DLC, The Ring City. So we'll be okay to add to the stipulations. I'll be going through both DLCs to take on the bosses in Ashes of Ariandel and The Ring City. So. Perfect. Just in case anyone's wondering, well, all bosses isn't uh, always quite intuitive when it comes to that, so we just usually say all bosses, but it also means all the DLC bosses too. So, All right, so I think I'm ready to get this started. I'll, I'll just count down and we can start when I confirm yes. So, For sure. Uh, we'll start in three, two, one. All right, good luck, Thank Matt. You. Good luck, Matt. I usually run this game with the music off and kind of listen to my own music because the game has a lot of uh, ambient silence and you just get to listen to the pitter-patter of the character's feet most of the time in between boss fights. They, they fixed that in Elden Ring a little bit. but uh, So typically I'm running without the normal music so it's going to be a treat because the music in this game is very good but 
Uh, when you run this game a lot, you can kind of get bored of just listening to the ambient sounds and the pitter patters for a while. But as we already start, I'm headed toward the first boss, uh, Yodix Gundir here. And uh, I have a quick little strat to take care of him. You know this strat, right, Amy? Yeah. Th this is probably my favorite Gundir fight. I like it way more than bombs myself. I don't know what you think. It's pretty hicky rude. Yeah, so we hit him with the parry here, and we're already going to see an instance of bonus damage from them being in a staggered state. Uh, yeah. Same with right here. It's really fast, so if you're not, nice. if you're not like really watching, it's over before you can even really notice I fought a boss. <laughs> yeah, nice. Who wants nice. to count bosses with me? That's one. That is one. So you'll also notice that I took off the chest piece armor and the helmet immediately. The reason I do that is because I want the lighter roll so that when I'm doing running segments and I drop from a ledge, I have to roll, right? So if I'm locked into a medium roll, it's less distance and it's a slower animation. So that's why it's important that I stay under 30% equipment load when I'm doing running segments. However, you'll see me putting on armor for boss fights because I want to take less damage in boss fights if I do take a hit. So at the shops there, I bought two items. I bought the short sword and the dagger, which the short sword is going to get us through the start game, and the dagger is going to be really important for certain early game segments. I also infused yeah. my short sword with the starting gift, the fire gem. It's going to give us a lot of bonus damage here at the beginning. And I also uh, got the extra Estus from the blue Estus because I don't need any blue stuff in this. I don't need any uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Only uh, <laughs> Sun Kiss. We're not hitting them with the Baja Blast today. Maybe Fanta. I don't know. It's orange. Orange Gatorade? <laughs> you yeah, that could work. Or Sunny D. Sunny D, that's the classic. Although I think the lore of this game is uh, it tastes like liquid fire or something, which doesn't sound very good. Are you going to see me do a little trick here where I do a plunging attack and it's going to launch me forward? That does two things. It gives me momentum and it also saves me some fall damage. High wall is actually really scary. Uh, there's a joke about this being the uh, Dark Souls three minute reset. Right there is a spot where people die a lot. Uh, this part up here is also a part where people die a lot, but I'm going to play it extra safe because I don't uh, really want to uh, do this run back. So there's a guy in my community that like, likes to... Oh! <laughs> oh my. He likes to vote on uh, that guy uh, ending my run every time I start a run. <laughs> and he roots for Halberd guy. The mean wow. guy. He, he says that... <laughs> That's not very nice. Yeah. He says that Halberd guy is like... O'Doyle rules kind of guy. That might be a boomer joke these oh days. Oh my god. <laughs> I haven't thought about that in ages, so maybe. <laughs> uh, typically there's like a damage cancel thing up here, but I'm gonna uh, chicken out a little bit and do something a little safer. It's another reset point for me, but I'm just gonna cast Spook here instead, which is like fall control from Dark Souls. Anyone who was watching Regal's run last the same spell. They just named it a different name. It's going to get rid of fall damage for me, but it won't prevent me from dying if the fall is too high. It also makes my footsteps silent, so bosses can't, or enemies can't recognize I'm there unless they their vision cone sees me. I'm going to talk to Emma here, get the small banner. Uh, I guess I had full health. I usually heal there, so that's just muscle memory. Don't worry about it. Muscle memory. <laughs> So, oh, doing that part without crit out is weird. Yeah. <laughs> gotta say. You're going to see me do this funny little roll with a toggle here. It's actually queuing up an item in my uh, in the game's memory. I'm going to unequip it so I can do a special little trick here with the spook spell and the throwing knives I picked up. The throwing knives are very important for this run, so... 
Normally you can't equip a lightning resin to a fire infused sword, but because I did a little bit of speedrunner magic, and I have lightning resin on my sword now. I also dropped it on the ground because I duplicated it. Yeah, and the damage is amazing. Arguably best boss, best sport, for sure. Yikes. I didn't want to get splat. <laughs> That's too. Vort best boy, though. <laughs> yeah, so when you drop the item on the ground and you do that little trick with the throwing knives and casting the spell, it doesn't actually use the item because it doesn't exist in your inventory. But if it's in your inventory, it uses it from your inventory. So that is the uh, importance of dropping it here at the beginning. I'm going to take a little detour here, take the dog snacks. It's a uh, alluring skull, which is going to be used to make some of my trips safer. The, the alluring skull aggroes enemies to them, so there's some scary spots with dogs that end my run, and I'm going to try and use the skulls to keep them from ending my run. We're saving the animals yeah. here. <laughs> or saving me. <laughs> I'm the animal. <laughs> saving. saving you from the animal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, so I picked up an Estus shard here. It's going to give me an upgrade to my flask. Uh, not the total amount healed, but the uh, total amount of uses. These are charcoal pine resin. They're going to give me a fire damage buff. We're about to fight a big tree. And it's going, and the big tree, go figure, is weak to big fire. So Chalk. when you hit him with a fire infused <laughs> sword with a fire buff, he takes giga fire damage. Yeah, that checks out. Again, you're not supposed to be able to. I'll display it here with what happens when you try to use the resin normally. Part of the routing. To queue up the item. So up here, to bait out this guy, I use an item. So when you try to use the resin, you get that little butt scratch animation. It's cueing you that, hey, you can't do that. And I'm going to tell the game, actually, I can. I'm going to do that same trick where I drop the item on the ground. For some reason, the game storing the item in memory from me trying to use it lets me just use it with the throwing knife when I cast a, a sorcery on this patch. It's very specific to this patch. All right, so now we have double fire to double burn down the tree. Right in the middle of the town meeting. So now I just have to kill some time, so I uh, use the soul and heal here. And then it's a scripted fall down here, so we don't take fall damage. Thankfully, Miyazaki was nice to us. Right there is a little trick. Uh, we quit out and jump at a specific timing, and the game teleports us back to the entrance so we don't have to warp back out. It's called Unstable Ground. <laughs> of course. Uh, I can go over the interest intricacies of quit outs a little bit. Hemi, can you kind of talk about... Uh, Power of quit outs in this game for me, please. Yeah, basically, when something is going wrong in this game, on a running section, you really want to quit out. Also, something that Matt was doing there with the camera is very small, but I would say it's very interesting about DS3, is that the camera can uh, basically change a movement and, and uh, things that the enemies are doing. That's why he was pointing the camera down. And we also do it on profane capital before Yorm. Some of us do it at least. 
um, you, you may basically make some enemies be more prone to do certain things. It's very it, weird. Same it lowers the their frame rate, which makes them do some funny business. Yeah. Because uh, in order to save like memory, they lower the details on um, things that are off screen. Going full science, nice. Love yeah. it. <laughs> Full so science. that's why that's why the evangelist there because she's got like a, a huge like hurt box. The game's very confused yeah. about what it's doing with that actor, I guess you would call it in programming. And uh, and it just like slips off the bridge there because it's a, a big thing and it's kind of like walking on the edge of a bridge. But because I didn't quit on the door, the evangelist position is way different, so it's less likely that she'll slip off there. The bridge is less scary when you don't quit out the door anyway. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, going for the Italian... Italian FKS? Yes. Nice. The Italian FKS. Oh, beautiful. Nice. So basically, Mad now is on a death cam, and he can basically go through a door and just skip the whole or on swamp area, which is amazing. It saves a lot of time. Wow, yeah, this is amazing. Yep. Uh, the game thinks I'm... Well, the game expects me to die uh, from fall falling death, like in a pit. But thanks to my uh, insane acrobatics, I didn't fall into the pit. And uh, <laughs> it, for, it stops loading assets. Yeah. No, uh, no crab battles for Matt. Uh, we'll get to the crab later. Let's <laughs> 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 well, see. I quit out here. Uh, the game still saves my position, even though I was really far away from where I did the initial glitch. It's kind of like Sun's game, Sun's gate skip. If you are familiar with Dark Souls one speedruns, it's amazing that through the years of. Uh, Miyazaki's engine, they didn't really fix things like this. They kind of addressed it in Elden Ring. It You can still do it, but they just made it, it so it you can't warp around <laughs> through walls with it. <laughs> yeah. You can even do it in Bloodborne, too. Crazy. Any, uh, Dark Souls 2, I think, uses a different engine, so they don't have the, uh, the same yeah. kind of thing. Uh, this guy can kill me, so I'm gonna quit out this bonfire. I, this health, I don't yeah, think he could. Saving some but... time as well. Saving like one second. In game the time. Bonfire quit out. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> the speedrunner mindset. Yeah. Uh, so, what's different about how I'm playing currently versus how I do normally for PB attempts is uh, when we're doing PB attempts, we do in game time. Uh, so we quit on doors and bonfires and a bunch of different animations to cancel it. Uh, to not let you guys... To try and lessen the amount of loading screens and title menus that you guys look at tonight. Uh, I'm going to get in, in these two spots because it's important. Yeah. But yeah. there's a lot of doors I'm just going to open and not quit out at because... Uh, it's It's quicker in real time. Like, we have fancy M.2 drives, so our load times are really quick, but it, it's still just a lot of loading screens. Uh, this is my favorite part of glitch categories in uh, Dark Souls 3. Yeah. Glitchless runners might hate it, but they like to torture themselves no. with this boss. <laughs> <laughs> this is just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, speed runs, glitchless runs, and he constantly yeah, is at have, war with this boss. I have to fight this, sadly. <laughs> but me, imagine fighting this boss. Uh, we do this little trick where we put ourselves in front of the fog wall. And it turns out, after you activate a boss and they have a fog wall, if you don't trigger their fog wall, their AI does not activate. So then they just stare at you and let you. Um, <laughs> wow. Bully them. S stunned. We've got such a celeb here with Matt. <laughs> they can't handle it. 
Alright, and he's gone. Nice. I'll, I'll count it as four. There you go. Right, you're going to see me try to use, drop his soul, and then pick it up again. I am duplicating his soul because it gives 20,000 souls, which is going to be useful in getting us pretty powerful pretty quick. Taking bets, Hemi. Excuse me? Taking bets on this fence. Ooh, you're going to go for fence? Nice. What a gamer. Let's go. Nice, nice skip. Uh, so that is a trick called fence skip. It's a very infamous skip because uh, for a long time, everyone was really bad at it. But since a long time <laughs> ago, we've gotten significantly better at it. So we can do it without quitting out there. You can just pop over it pretty well. Some of us, uh, there are some people that are still very angry at that skip. But it, it's a, yeah. it's a mostly a rhythm game kind of skip. This skeleton is. Oh, scary. Oh, my. <laughs> Someone's tryharding. Uh, those guys can one-shot me at this health sometimes. So I'm, I'm being very careful. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that part is scary. So I see them on edge running past these skeletons. That, that They have ended many of my PB <laughs> attempts. <laughs> All right, we survived. But anyway, that pot. So for some reason, it's... Uh, geometry is really weird and you can wiggle on it at a certain angle and you just pop up over it and it saves quite a bit of time because normally you have to run all the way around that fence. That's why we call it fence skip. Really creative name. Some people call it pot skip. I'm actually going to queue up this resin while hitting the cutscene so I don't get any animation. And then I'm going to do the tumble buff again to buff my weapon. And all I have to do is break this guy's bling. <laughs> I love that. Demolishing the drip. Sorry, Walner. Nice. Clean. All right, so there's like a specific no more, hit uh, count blame. that I have to do there uh, to break the bracelets. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I feel it, it's when you first fight the boss and you don't know to break his bling, it's, uh, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Just watch people. Oh, God, the skeletons. Ooh. Party. <laughs> They're what like, party. sup, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> Bone zone emote, dancing skeletons. Uh, do I want to quit out against these skeletons. Let me listen. Yeah, I do. Darn it. Oh, wait. Just kidding. The I missed it. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> oh, nice. They were just a bit close to you, I guess. Yeah, they always chase me down there. S sometimes I can get away with not chasing them. So I'm going to change the subject and tell you I bought three, uh, 11 Homeward Bones, 3 Karthus Rouge, 12 Titanite Shards, which is what we used to uh, upgrade our weapon, which I just did. And then I also used a Sharp Gem I picked up earlier to... Um, Upgrade my weapon to sharp plus four twin blades, which are very powerful at this level. And I'm so sorry, but I need her to stand up. Please don't be mad at me for that. The classic. She, maybe she agreed to give blood before the event today. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, I quickly leveled up my dex to 39, and that's going to be our dex for most of this run. It's going to change at the end game, but that. In the past, we used to just run 39 decks the whole run, but we've recently done some switches, which I'm really excited to show off today. Yeah, a lot of changes lately to this, which is very exciting. Emmy's a big fan of one of the changes that I'm going to do later as well. Big, big, big fan. <laughs> uh, so here's the crab that uh, you were referring to earlier. It can be a menace. Nice. Here, here we are. I've died to it uh, 
by being silly. You know, sometimes I get a little silly, <laughs> but if I use a proper stamina management when running to it, I can easily get by it. So I just picked up the Grass Crest Shield. It's going to give us stamina regen. It's really important. It's It weirdly saves... I, I guess it shouldn't be weird to think of because it regens your stamina faster, but uh, it seems like such a small change, but over the whole course of this run, the stamina regen through running segments saves you quite a bit of time on especially a long run like this. In addition to that, it lets you attack sooner, so bosses will uh, will die sooner. Which is fast. We, we like that. Yep. Yeah, definitely. All right, so Sage didn't give me the um, RNG I was looking for, but I have a backup. Normally, you want the Sage to um, cast orbs above his its head, but it didn't do that this time. But I know exactly where it'll teleport. I'm in its head. Psychic mind reading abilities is what I would tell you to impress you, but there's a way to figure it out where they're going to teleport. <laughs> yeah, you can always just read the crystals and positioning. You want to talk to some scientists? No hit runners know like every crystal formation that boss does, I swear. Yeah. The four faces, or whatever. <laughs> uh, Doge three head speedrunners only know the first part. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna equip some armor here because here's an instance of very spooky dogs. I'm not using the skulls on them. Oh, oh, oh no. So anyway, I'm gonna quit out yeah, because dogs. these dogs are. Yeah. The infamous teleporting kind. Maybe I yeah. should have just let them chase me so I could show off their teleporting. But nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> so those dogs are bugged and they never got fixed throughout the game's entire lifespan. Uh, there's some kind of typo in the code which makes them teleport behind you. And sometimes teleport on top of you and, and stuff. It's it's really silly. There's a lot of funny clips out there of the dogs teleporting all over the place. There's even like dogs yeah, teleporting into textures where speedrunners actually go to do skips and stuff. It, it's great. The dogs teleporting this game oh is God. is such a good treat, you know. <laughs> That is mm. funny. Like, you'll be running here and you'll see the dog falling off in the distance on the side. <laughs> like, right here, it'll teleport off to your right and just fall into that pit. Yeah, or kill you. Which is or kill funny, you. It'll just teleport on top of you as you're turning on this bridge and knock you off. So it's just kind of random? Yeah, it, the game is yeah. trying to, like, make them track you by having them teleport teleport okay. behind you, but instead there's some kind of typo which makes them just wildly teleport all over the place instead of behind you. So, and it's only with a specifically sized dog. Because not all the dogs teleport like that. Hmm. It's kind of a spooky run, so uh, I have to be really careful about my stamina and uh, pathing. I'm going to try to get this guy stuck here. Which I do not, but that's okay. I'm running fast enough that didn't catch me. Oh god, there he is. Stop right there. <laughs> yeah, this game has a uh, lot these of enemies are also sessions. terrifying, so I'm gonna quit out this door. I love how they're just screaming at you as you quit. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, how dare Dude. you make us look at a loading screen? Yeah, very DS3, this type of parts. Just hostility everywhere. All right, Matt, take us to church. This is a very, very stinky church. With uh, one of my uh, favorite bosses in the game. Uh, I guess sarcasm or whatever, uh, but... <laughs> so I have to listen to this giant. All right, he's giving me the slow attack, so I can do this. This is a damage cancel. Uh, when you roll off a ledge, you can do a funny little quick step with the dagger. And it prevents you from taking full damage there. 
Uh, this is also why I bought the dagger at the beginning of the game because you have to either fat oh god fat roll through the, the muck there. Shout out to Pokemon, or um, you can quick step through it. Right. So the dagger is what's giving you that little slide. Yeah. It's the weapon art of the dagger. It also has invincibility frames, which is what I use to prevent the fall damage. It kind of functions like a better roll, oh. but it gets worse when you run out of the blue bar, the FP bar. It still kind of functions like a roll, but it's just way worse when you don't have FP. It's, it's much cooler than yeah. So I picked up the Lloyd Sword Ring. When I'm at full health, I'll get a pretty significant damage buff. I don't know the percentage exactly, but I'm going to try to keep my health at full through most fights now and through most of the game. So this is why I'm a big fan of this boss. It's a big gamble where that red orb goes. And um, the big ones take more hits than the little ones. Sometimes the orb gets a little silly and pops in and out, mm. like right here. Like now. Thank you, game. <laughs> Thank you. It, it needed me to display it. Showcasing the, yeah, the funniness. Cool. All right, so after you kill a certain amount of times with the orb, the main deacon comes out, and then I just bonk him a few times. Nicely done. Well, it's like a... Someone refers to that fight as a clown fiesta because you're just kind of aimlessly running around the arena chasing an orb around, and you have all these goobies that are shooting fireballs at you, swinging at you, and trying to have a mosh pit with you. <laughs> You light up their yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason we have to path over to the church there is we take out the deacons so we can get the, um, what is it, the small doll, which is the key for this next area. There's usually like this invisible barrier that doesn't let you pass. If you have the small doll, you can get through it. But before we do that, we're going to pet the dog really quick. I don't know, would you call us a dog, Hemi? I mean, tier 3 I dog, mean, right? On brand, I guess. <laughs> Four legs, it's a dog. Yeah. He gives us a very important ring. It's the Pontiff's right eye. It gives us bonus damage for giving offense. So the more times you attack, it stacks up bonus damage. So with the Twin Blades, you hit them a lot. So you get to keep the stacks up quite often, and they give you a very noticeable damage increase. Yeah. Hit boss more good. Yes. Hell yeah. This is one of my favorite skips too. Uh, glitchless Runners in Shambles. Yep. Sorry, Hemi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you've ever run through this area, it is a nightmare. But thanks to a little yep. bit of a, uh, you know. A lot of RNG. Speedrunner magic, we can just jump over the ledge here nice. and uh, not have to worry about it. Get to see the sights mm -hmm. a little bit. A little bit of a scenic view. We take this bonfire because uh, path kind of splits here, and we need to come back here after we uh, go meet with uh, Mr. Mr. Sullivan. So this part's weird. You can kind of run still in this deep water while also getting a light roll still. It doesn't function like the goop in the church. So we just opt to light roll through the water, and when we need to recharge our stamina, we have that like half sprint thing going on. Oh, okay. Some people don't know you can actually run in that water. They'll just do this really slow, slow walk through it. But yeah, if you just hold the circle button, you will do this little weird jog through it. Fun facts. All right, here's one of the this spookiest part is, parts. Yeah. But I have skulls, so surely nothing bad will happen. Thank God for skulls.
This part without any skulls is basically just a coin flip. It's fine, Hemi. Nice, look at that. Simply Thanks, hold they the got sprint their little button. Crunchies. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, and we're here. Gotta we're at the boss forward. now. So this is like a big uh, wall for some casual players on their first playthrough, but... Uh, we kind of just uh, take him to church, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I will say that. And it makes sense that it's a wall for a lot of people. Imagine if we couldn't parry this boss. This would be way harder. Oh, yeah. Nicely done. I yeah. think I'm at eight now, eight bosses, so GG. Every once in a while, I get a, a smarty pants that likes to make fun of me and say, Hey, Matt, did you know that Antif was supposed to be the last boss of the video game? <laughs> and I go, oh. Is that the just classic. like complete No, it's, it's real, but they... They like oh, to remind okay. me every time I fight that boss, and then I go, no way. <laughs> no way. Classic lore enjoyers. You know, there should be there should be some kind of certificate in uh, Vadi Vid University. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Everyone who plays Dark Souls for the first time, they spend, you know, 10 hours watching Vadi Vid. They gotta get caught up to date on what the heck they just played. I mean, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, so this can look pretty spooky, but I have like a really specific pathing and stamina that I do through this area to prevent all danger. I'm gonna get shot now, watch. Just kidding. Hold you guys. You got this, you got this. Uh, according to my scientist friends, uh, Spacey, he claims that the quit out in this elevator is actually faster. So if it's not, yeah, I've heard that too. I'm, I'm blaming Spacey. <laughs> Spacey is here supporting in the chat, so shout out. <laughs> I, so I did my best to kind of fi um, figure out which. Bots, I was going to do uh, real time strats versus in game strats. Not all of them, though, because there are some strats that putting out sets up the enemy placement in a way that is really natural for me to play. So, where things are slower in real time, I'm it's mostly probably due to uh, enemy placements, is why I'm doing it. We're running yeah, up to, to not die. Aldrich. Right. Oh, you know, I forgot to pick up that bonfire, so I'm going to spook here. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. I actually died here in practice, and I, yeah, you probably saw me clip it in the Discord. I was like, why did I die? <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Good idea. Safety, right? Well, the run back is so long yeah, here. Brutal. Nor like normally you don't take fall damage here, but sometimes if you do, you just die. So I'm just gonna opt to not. So remember I said Fogwell's trigger AIs, but uh, thanks to our friends in the Elden Ring world, we learned that Fogwalls are also just silly little guys in the land of From Software spaghetti coding. <laughs> Because uh, we learned this trick. Which lets us uh, have his AI not activate. Oh, wow. You want to talk about roadblocks? This was definitely one for me in the casual playthrough. So this is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, this boss is hard. It's kind of tragic for me that they found this glitch, not going to lie. I really like fighting this boss. Oh yeah, it's a good one in Glitchless, I guess, Hemi. Yeah. 
Nice. All right, I'm at nine. Nine bosses, good job. You're doing great. Uh, so that boss used to be a roadblock in the speedrun as well uh, before we learned that AI freeze because, oh boy, learning his RNG and how to deal with the things he does was a, was a nightmare. How recent is that uh, discovery? I think it's like two years old now. It, okay. it happened yeah. like literally around the time Elden Ring came out because Elden Ring had um, AI freezes exactly like it. And then the glitch hunters decided to play around with the fog walls in this game afterwards and found that. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, thanks to Elden Ring got the that Aldrich freeze and the bonfire crit outs. Yeah. Remember what else? And well, I have to listen to this really quick. Um, and that shows you that uh, from software just really just tries to keep their spaghetti code rolling. So I'm gonna see how far they take that engine into the next generation. Best of luck not getting lost in here. Yeah. <laughs> I on my casual playthrough, I got. Fuck in here for so long. <laughs> and then I do the speed run and it's over in no time. Yeah. I forgot to practice the uh, no quit out version of this, so I'm just gonna do the spook quit out. I don't think I've done a spook quit out yet, so I can explain this. So. Yeah. When you use the spell Spook and you hit the ground, there's like a few frames where you can quit out, and it actually saves your position on the ground. It works in Dark Souls 1 too with the spell Fall Control. It works exactly the same. However, in that game, you don't start out the game with the spell, so in this game, it's way better. Insane that they gave you this spell at the start because it was broken in um, Dark Souls 1 as well. For real. Pretty cool that you have it though at all. When the normally we jump between that gap on PB attempts, it's kind of risky, but it also requires a bunch of quit outs if he doesn't do a certain attack. That's so slower in real time than just climbing the ladder here. And if you miss it, it's like a catastrophic, embarrassing climb up the big ladder there. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're uh, running up to Yorm. I know Hemi said that we tilt our camera here. I am one of the t camera tilters. But the reason why we That's do this cool. is we want to manipulate these guys in a way that these fireballs they throw at you don't hit you, which I think I did a great job there. Yeah, that was very good. Nice, yeah. Pretty small detail, but it is a thing. Here's a fun fight. Let's uh, harness the power of storms. Let's go. Ah, boo! The classic. I got the rare funny. Early. Early transition. Okay, he's being nice. Yep. All right, let's see if he's nice again. Oh. Wow. No stumps. No stumps is very good. You're too kind, Yorm. He was uh, feeling a little winded that fight. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> I see Not the average event luck. <laughs> Don't want to curse it, but... <laughs> so, that boss is funny because you have a... High chance that he's going to stomp you. And he didn't stomp me at all there. Which is very kind of that boss. Especially in this setting. Straight into Dancer. Let's go. 
Yeah. Really? Oh, the funny explosion attack. Now that's more like it. What a good boss, this one. Nice. Pretty good. Nice. Love this boss. Good job. It's okay, over in a blink memes. of an eye. Yeah, for real. We got to use the Karthus Rouge there. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the funny red buff is, it actually gives us a bleed proc. So you hit him a bunch of times. If you're a fan of Elden Ring, you're very familiar with bleed. You hit him a bunch of times, and a big chunk of damage flies off their health bar. Great. That game, Elden Ring loves bleed. Yeah. Which is funny, because in this game, they overtuned bleed, but then they decided, hey, that's way too strong. And then they nerfed bleed across the board, and then they release Elden Ring, and... Well, eat us crazy again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think about the next boss, Matt? He's a he's a funny dragon wannabe. Kind of like the, Ooh, the those sign. are those are fighting <laughs> words for sure. Uh. He's another one of my favorite bosses. <laughs> Mine too, actually. I really like this boss, not gonna lie. <laughs> he likes to yap. Give him that. Yeah. He, he's lonely. He needs somebody to talk to. Yeah, cute little dragon. Well, this guy's kind of funny. Uh, I have a strat that's gonna try and keep him from doing things. But... He has a mind of his own and likes to misbehave. Oh, throwing knife. Nice. Oh, oh nice. like this. Oh. <laughs> that is an attack that we don't like seeing. Where have you gone? Oh, no. Setting up the script. Killer? Oi. That is kind of scary, actually. You can get, like, the. Uh, like, if you do it near a pillar, you can literally fall off the map. If you do the repost. Nice. That was pretty good. You know, I was hoping Very I would fall yeah, through the nice pillar one. there, but. I don't know. I just got. That can happen? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It would have been funny. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that was way comfier than uh, the average Osiris fight would go. I guess with the new strat, it's supposed to be comfy like that most of the time. I mean, that strat's not that new. It's been around for, I think, it's like a couple years as well. Back in my day, though, we used to just fight him. And boy, oh boy, was he a, <laughs> was he a snake in the grass. Yeah, straight up fighting Osiris sounds very, very concerning. We had some funny little strafes that made it much better. Yeah. But Definitely. you still cannot just control when he gets in a mood to just jump around the arena. And that's a big arena too, so you can kind of see how much time you could lose to him just dashing around being a goober. Cancel there, nice. So, what do y'all, what do y'all think of the next boss? Do we count it as boss thirteen, or do we count it as boss one? So the first again? one's called Gundy One D. <laughs> this one's called Gundy Two D. Perfect. And this one's cooler as well. Look at that strife. Beautiful.
Nicely done. This boss can be very scary. He straight up just kills you, especially at this health. Definitely works out. If he does that like uppercut into kick, it's an auto death. Yeah, that's over. Because I am a funny guy and didn't level up HP. <laughs> This run through is also kind of scary because I'm at the starting health still. Don't fear though, I will level my health. Dude, Stussy Ooh. Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. Yeah, that one was questionable for sure. Those arrows teleport through the textures as well. Uh, You're well made game. <laughs> Technically, don't have to quit out here, but I'm not gonna use up all my Estus rolling through the fire. <laughs> we just quit out. We can just. Oh my God! There's a bug. The Brazilian. The Brazilian bug is attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> Go away, fly. Anyway, so I'm gonna do a, a different version of the damage cancel. Let's see if uh, I can get it here. This time I used a roll instead of uh, the dagger's weapon art. It functions essentially the same. This is actually like one of my favorite bosses. No irony on this one. Yeah. I love this boss fight. Certainly a 10, in my opinion. It's a very hard fight. A lot of positioning. Love this boss also. Man, look at that. Nice. Very well done. It may not really look like it. He was very nice to me. Uh, but also that fight is very technical. And uh, Safety? Oh. Thank Can you. you. save gamers? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> I saw you skip the first one. I'm like, maybe he'll go for the second one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Old habits this die hard. Yep, yeah, that's, like, that's fair. Thank you, Hemi. Yeah, so there's a lot of practice that goes in that boss because you have to really position yourself to bait the proper attacks. And then you need a contingency plan for when he doesn't give you those really nice attacks that I baited out. So that's where the extra hours come in where you can predict and uh, dodge the attacks that you aren't looking for. And... Very cool. Yeah, so... We are looking for like the shield drop into the backswing, which he gave me the shield drop on both parts of that fight, which is the important part. Like you don't really need the uh, the backswing all the time. And he gave us something really nice. The one thing that he does that can really slow you down is he'll just turtle up and hold his shield up against you. That that you can't really do anything about that. So you just hit the shield and hope that he does the react. The counter attack. I gotta say, love to see how you're explaining DSA while doing probably the hardest running section perfectly. That's very cool. I ran through this section so many times, it's burned into my brain. I'd say it's one of the hardest, for sure. At least for me. Bets on Sussy Gargoyle? Uh, another rooftop rumble. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Oh boy, oh, he's being sussy. Uh, as you can see, he's uh, appropriately named Sussy Gargoyle. Thrall, leave me alone. He, that gargoyle also has a mind of its own. It's sentient.
a long time runners will tell you that that gargoyle will just decide to end your run sometimes. We've all seen it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that attack is so hard to dodge, actually. So delayed. Uh huh. I'm 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 rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having the pitless runners hate him topic curse today. <laughs> uh, Anyone who watched my GDQ run from twenty twenty one, I made a comment about no hit runners not, not uh, taking it way too safe, and then I got hit there. <laughs> <laughs> It's it, it's classic, so I have to live with that legacy forever. Amazing setup. So now he's going to throw the knife. Oh. Nice. Oh, he was too close. Well, darn it. I guess I have to fight him. Do you think I remember how to fight this let's boss? Go. Well, let's see. I'm betting on yes. Godspeed. So basically what he was trying to do is set up a, a way to freeze second phase. But he was actually too close. Which was unfortunate, but look at that. The boss is still dead. Nice, you remembered. Good job. I had a feeling I was too close there, but I was You know, trying to be I was trying to be fast. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I was going really fast and I was like, man, I threw the knife and I looked at the carpet and I said, Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to take a detour back to uh back to this place. Oh god. Why do I go for that jump? <laughs> a close one. Uh so this jump's funny cuz if you jump at a very specific part of it, you get a fast run. I'll, I'll just do this and almost roll off, but um, I guess I'm just too used to going for the fast animation, which I should stop doing, honestly, but it's like a 0.3 second time save. <laughs> well, those worth things it. do add they up. They do. Yeah, it sounds worth it. <laughs> and there's swag, usually. Yes, they look cooler. That's way more important. Yeah, it does look cooler. Yeah. I saw someone in the chat say, when you try to go fast, but then you go slower. It's the pain of my life. <laughs> this pain, yeah. So we picked up this little uh, gesture, and it wasn't for aesthetic reasons, uh, if you've played this game. You take a little sit here. You have a nice little meditation. And you look at this mountain, and you go... Is that even the mountain we go to? I don't know. I don't think it is. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, going on an adventure. Anyway, you get warped yeah. to this funny little dragon place. And in the funny little dragon place, it's inhabited with funny little snake people. I don't know what it is with the snake oh, yeah, people and dragons, but yeah. Uh, we didn't address the whole restricted thing. I'm seeing people in chat asking about it. Oh right! Uh, wanna, yeah, wanna, wanna, wanna take it, Matt? <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, you can talk about now that. Maybe a good time. Okay, so basically, we had only one uh, all bosses glitched category, but at some point, pivot sprinting started being more used. I guess we could call it. And uh, yeah, basically, the difference is anything bow glitch and uh, pivot sprinting is not allowed. P pivot sprinting is basically a way that 
just changes. Um, it's a glitch that makes you sprint faster, but it really does change almost every running section. So it was then decided to split the categories. Because it really does change conceptually a lot of things. So that's this boss. That was good, by the way. It's a quick one, short and to the point. Where is it? Do it. Yes. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> now this is one of the new things. This is a new thing. And we love this new this thing. This is a new thing. We love it, yeah. Look you guys like dragon. My, my, my dragon, my dragon face, my beautiful dragon face. I was going to say, I, I love, love it. <laughs> 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 and so his the and the dragon head's weird neck. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the the head so small? It's <laughs> so funny to me. Uh this is a new thing we figured out. So recently we figured out with the power of pivoting, we can equip armor with the dragon buff, which you're not supposed to be able to do. And uh, so we get the benefits of the dragon resistances. Hold on, I gotta listen here. While also having the benefit of wearing armor. So you can actually do this with the torso as well. But the torso locks, the torso locks you into a medium roll, which when I explained earlier, the medium roll is, is slow. So we like that you can get the benefits of having the dragon head. I just realized I was running with a staff. Uh, while um, still maintaining your light roll. Hmm. I didn't quit out here, so... Let's see how nice this guy is. Yeah, no clue without crit out, actually. Don't kill me. Thank you. It's pretty good. Yeah, so this dragon buff business is like red hot off the presses. This is this is yeah. some new Dang, I almost Whoa. got the I almost got the, the funny cancel. <laughs> also buying this item right here that I'm about to buy. Also red hot off the presses. Yeah. A lot of new things. How uh, hot are we talking? How like new is this Like within the last month. Uh, the dragon yeah. heads oh, like wow, a week okay. ago. Let's go. <laughs> and then I'm washed up. Oh, damn it. I'm floating in the air. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have only one run with the with the dragon business. Yeah, we have one. Right? Yeah, Mochis we have one run. Mochis. So we have new stats now. Uh, we level up 17. Uh, vigor, 18 endurance, and a 55 a dex. And this is going to give us big damage. Mondo damage, as Vegeta would say. I'm going to buy a bunch of buffs and also some upgrade materials. Talk to Andre for the final time, and we can say bye to Andre forever. Take our twin blades to plus 10. Right, bye. Equip our new funny ring. And off screen, you didn't see me, but I just used a homeward bone. This is going to let us warp to uh, the Cinder run up instead of going to the really dark fire link. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's a little trick. Um, for some reason, you can use items off screen there. I don't know why. But it's a little time save. So now we're actually warping to DLC 2. And this is where the fun begins. Basically. Yeah, this is where the run gets spicy, one would say. I guess the whole run's pretty spicy. For some reason, the run has been uh, very kind to me, so we're looking for the spicy yeah, stuff. Yeah, we're getting into we're getting into the DLC now. Yeah. Yep. This is uh, this is end game stuff. And this is where all the hardest bosses are and all the hardest skips. Yeah. So. Can't wait to see uh, what Uncle Gale's up to these days. Good old Unky yeah, Gale. 
<laughs> Those of you who aren't familiar with this DLC, uh, there's like cinematic falling. So if you're wondering why I'm able to do these insane jumps and falls, it's it's lore intended. Yeah. Everyone knows that if you jump on a pile of ashes from absurd deadly heights that you will land safely. Come on, let's be real. Of course. This is a skip called Angel Skip. Uh, named because we are essentially skipping past the screaming angels that shoot missiles at us. I have to jump on a cage. The worst. We'll see if I can do it. Call this a clever use of geometry skip. Quote unquote. Clean. I'm grabbing this. Clean and safe. Stylish, Matt. Who is this guy? If we die here, I have to do that whole run back again. So I'm gonna grab that little little flyer there. Yeah, and this good, boss good is hard. A hard boss. Now he's going to set up a bleed proc. That's why he's using bleed and hitting without actually dealing any damage so that he can get the bleed proc in the middle of the fight and save time, of course. This boss Don't is actually... Out. It's, a, it's an actual hard fight. I did Yo, it Yo, let's very go. Well. Good job. Ooh, nice one. I think that's uh, that makes 17. But that boss is... It's very harsh. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. Yeah. Is it your favorite duo boss, Matt? In the whole entire the Soul series, up. it yeah. probably is. It's a well-designed boss, yeah, me like too. mechanically. I, I, I'm sure, like some people are like, well, you know, there's like cool lore bosses that are dual boss. Mo and Ornstein enjoy yours in shambles right now, but I'm telling you, mechanically, that boss is top-notch. <laughs> hot take, chat. Yes, it's the best duel for sure. I'm curious, chat. Do you have any favorite bosses throughout the Dark Souls series at all? Weigh in. All right, uh, so there's a way to do this without quitting out like four times, but uh, like I said earlier, there's just a very specific uh, enemy placement thing happening with quit outs here that I'm very unfamiliar with if I do it the non quit out way, so I'm just opting to quit out. It's four quit outs, but it lets me run a straight line and I don't have to worry about weird enemy AI. So this is one of the sacrifices I've taken. But I'm also running a mod that uh, gets rid of the logos. So, you know, we just look at the title screen and not Bandai Namco and whoever else, the FromSoft logo, over and over again. 
Unfortunately for Bloodborne runners, when they quit out, they have to look at those logos over and over again. Ah, uh, yes. So we actually have to kill this guy because he's summoning all these annoying archers. And it's going to really interrupt us with this next skip we're going to do here. I did not take damage. Oh well. Many of us are by. Yes. Ah, the funny. Oh, oh, oh my god, he's zooming. Wow, that was fast. Yeah. Good thing that you didn't get the. There is a meme where the bug can just jump off and die, and then you just lose your run, basically. <laughs> yeah, we could. You changed your armor and stuff, right? Matt? Oh, we don't have to for the new dragon head. Okay, right, right. Good. <laughs> I don't want anybody to partake here today. <laughs> so, I th yeah, I think you were watching when I did the funny forget the armor moment. But thanks to the new dragon <laughs> yeah. head. We don't have to worry about that. God bless. <laughs> good. Yes, good. Uh, so he his grab animation actually puts us below the floor, which there's no texture under, so we fall down. And we're also quitting out with the boop quit out tech that I talked about earlier. And that's what lets us basically skip the run around the whole entire DLC, too. It's crazy how much this saves. Because you have to run past Bridge Madeir normally, and that's like a whole thing, and then you have to kill Bridge Madeir. And uh, I'm going to do something that's going to skip killing Bridge Madeir right now. It's one of the hardest skips in the game. Yeah. Nice. Going for the new type of elevator clip as well. Good. This is part of the new things as well. Brand Before new, we hot off the presses. The yeah, brand new. Bro, this one's kind of good. <laughs> I'm going to jinx it right now. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Now, Medir, which is... Actually, you can actually kill him. Crazy, I know. And it is a script, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. Even people that watch speedrunning. I have to say my new catchphrase for the run. Dragon v. Dragon. <laughs> Let's go. That's so bad, just... Dragon is the boss. All right, pretty good, pretty solid. Some people say Madeir is the hardest fight in the game, but um, thanks to some secret knowledge, you can make him do the same thing every time you fight him. Or very forbidding cool. forbidden knowledge passed down for generations. Yeah. <laughs> I just picked up one of the most important items in the game, the Chloranthi plus three ring. It gives us extra mondo stamina regen. I'm gonna quit out here because that guy with the two big swords is gonna um sneak up on me. For those big swords, he's kinda sneaky sometimes. Emmy, what do you think about this boss? I hate him, actually. 
<laughs> um, actually, I, want, I wanted to ask you, what, are we going to see some new things as well in this box? Oh, yeah, we got some more red hot tech off the presses. Nice. <laughs> So we're going to be seeing a buff with the staff, which is going to be more damage, which is used with pivoting as well. See? Pivot, buff, and bundle. So that's massive damage. He did a little bit of a funny. Yeah, a little bit of a stall. But nice. thanks to the power of the new stuff, him doing a funny doesn't matter. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so basically we're doing this thing with the staff where we're using the weapon art of the staff, which gives you a damage buff that's only supposed to go on the staff, which is stupid because who hits people with the staff? Um, so... <laughs> Pivoting, for some reason, the magic of pivoting in this game lets us pivot, use the staff's weapon art, and swap it to something else, and it applies it to whatever's in your main hand. In this case, it's my Twin Blades, and it's a pretty sizable damage increase that stacks with the bun uh, Gold Pine Bundle, so you get massive damage increases for bosses like Half-Light that we're able to use it on. It's a really, yeah, really fresh tech. And we're going to see it again later on. Yeah, I have a few more bosses to do it on. It's really cool, too. Now it, Gale. I don't use it on Gale, I'm excited. But. No. But still, what a good boss. What a good boss. I cranked the music, so I'm sorry, audio guy. Blast it, <laughs> let's go. Oh no. Oof. Oh no. Ooh. You know, that's actually the best spot I could have died to him. It's fine. Uncle Gale has a little spring in his step still, I see. It is fine. I can fight him without it. You got this, man. Yeah, you got this. This this fight is very hard, actually. It's it one of the, the hardest, hardest fights in the whole game. Yeah. All right, he's going to do that attack opener, which is actually great. Oh, he didn't do the follow-up. I got... I had a little too much spice on uh, how I was fighting Gale. Let's go, Matt. Let's go. Uh, so, I mean, the follow-up fight was way better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you got there. First try. The, the follow-up fight was actually, like, way, way, like, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's such an epic fight. Love that. Yeah. The fact that this run, you go from Gale to Bilhelm Skip, which is a glitch that Matt is going to do now, and then Frida is always going to be just crazy to me. The, the difficulty is very high, actually. Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure at the end of the run, but it, yeah. it's fine, dude. It'll be fine. You got this. So with the new stats, we used to have more stamina. So a lot of us are still feeling the growing pains of fighting Gale with less stamina. So you probably saw me take a, quite a few hits there. It's um, partially me just greeting with my hits when I should be waiting to roll. But that just comes from, you know, more m another thousand hours practicing Gale. You know, it's fine. <laughs> it's a fun boss so to he's practice. Lowering, he's lowering the bridge for the upcoming glitch. That's why he hit it, basically. This is a very cool glitch. I'm gonna turn this down. Don't, don't, don't hurt me, audio guy. Sorry. There is a, there's a little meme with Gale where you always crank the music up when you fight Gale because the music's good. <laughs> That's always fine with it's us. It's a fan favorite. Uh oh. Matt is going into death cam again, like we've seen before and this is this is something we could call it this glitch is basically he's going to be going from the bottom up to the top of where Frida is and then uh, be able to go through the door without having to do all the running section from before and some of you may not know, but when you're in death camp, the controls are not the same. It's not the regular type of movement. It's different. It's tank controls. So it's a little bit trickier. Nice. The camera flipping. It's always so flashy. So, is, is Matt still using the D-pad? Or, sorry, the analog stick for this part? Or do you have to switch? I don't Actually, have to switch. It's but... preference. I mean, oh, right. I, I guess you use the D-pad for other stuff. Uh, or I use keyboard for that because yeah. it feels really intuitive to move around like a tank. I become the tank That's when fair. I... Um, <laughs> when I use the keyboard. Oh, so he's, he's using the bridge that he broke down basically now. And this is the chapel where Frida usually is. Uh, usually is. She confirmed is here. <laughs> no, I, I guess we'll you find should. out. It's a pretty long death cam. It's pretty spooky, especially because it's really hard and it's at the end of the run. So you have like run nerves on top of it. But we did it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. I didn't want to be too chatty because I know you have to focus during sections like that, especially. I didn't get a safety door. So if I die to Frida, we'll just do it again. You can chat up on that one. <laughs> nice, here we go. We'll see if she's here or if she left for uh, SGDQ already. Oh no, she's here. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a scary boss. Very menacing. Okay. 
Alright, soup anyone? Good RNG. Look at that. Very clean second phase. We're duping the budding blossom here because I need to use it on Cinder as well. And only have one left. Oh yeah? Ah, oh, you're so kind. Nice. Nice. That was very good. Ooh, that was a scary one. She gave one. me the comfiest fight at the end there. She she was in a good mood. I think that makes 21. All right, so this is also a boss. Uh, you'll see that I just love the NPC <laughs> bosses when it comes to this game, but this guy has some canine friends that also like to chill out with him. See how nice they are, too. The Beastmaster. Come on, buddy. Oh, classic. Yep, Classico. You know, like, boss. Nobody likes this boss, period. He's a he's a PvP god. That's why uh he's very <laughs> disliked. <laughs> Be alarmed, everyone. I just wanted the little nibbles from the doggo there. Ooh, GG on that one. We want him to attack there because it cancels our attack animations so that we gain stamina faster. We slug with the wolf at the end. Makes it uh, more exciting. Yeah, definitely. This is another boss that we... Uh, Lug with a little bit as well. Oh, we're going to see the staff buff again, which is very cool. I see. Ooh. That's some more spice. Don't cinder. You have nerves of steel. These last couple of bosses, whoo, yeah. <laughs> rocking it. Very close to the end. Don't cry, everyone. We're not done yet. You can cry afterwards. I know that was sad music. <laughs> <laughs> so two no bosses. crying yet. <laughs>
But it's okay to cry if you want to, Jeff. Yeah, some of our viewers were wondering when you'd be back here, and I guess now we have our answer. Face. Funny attack. Yeah. Into funny attack. Into good attack. This face can be scary because you want to trade, but you don't want to trade too much because then you're going to be dead. <laughs> Had to uh, strike that balance, but it looks like Matt's uh, unstoppable. GG. Yeah, you guys can almost cry now. Sorry, I, I, I finished that boss too fast to get to the good part of the song. That's my bad. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, who's even left right now? This, uh, this is the last boss of the game, so when I quit out... Ah, right, um, right. I'm going to quit out when the boss defeated. All right. Uh, when the boss defeated uh, text comes on screen, I'm going to quit out. I actually don't know where the ballista is. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh I, I'm going to quit out I when the golden freaky. letters come on screen and that's going to be time. <laughs> yeah. Classic. <laughs> this is old Demon King. He's really hard. That's time. Nice. Wow. Oh, old Demon King, a little too old to keep up on that one. Good job, oh. Matt. <laughs> Ranker C. Would you say a little under 129 on that run, Richard? Nice. Good job, this Matt. In -game Ooh, how do you this feel? In-game time is crazy, too. <laughs> yeah. That is. Is yeah. it a PB uh, no, or no, was it close? Uh, so... I was talking about, I died to Gale, so that was a pretty good time loss, but I think everything else in True. the run went yeah. very, very well. But, um, I, you know, I talked about door animations and how we quit out mm -hmm. to save in-game time. It adds up because there's a lot over the whole run and the timer runs through the door animation. So we close, when we quit the game and reopen the game, we skip all that time. And so I'm looking at this and so I died at Gale. I got safety bonfires. I don't it was like right at the start of Gale. I'm guessing I lost maybe 45 seconds to a minute on Gale. So what that would be 115 something. I'd say that this if I was running a PB it'd be something closer to like a a 114 or 113 or something, like high 113. Okay. That's like pretty pretty damn close though. Yeah. Yeah. You were you were definitely on a roll. That was absolutely amazing. I counted 25 bosses. Did anyone else count with me? Matt, do you have any shout outs, comments, anything you'd like to tell our viewers? Uh, I'm catching my breath after that run because it <laughs> <laughs> is breathe, please it's breathe. A, it's a doozy. It's it's actually a, a really fun run. This is the first 
Well, I won't say it's the first speedrun. This is the first speedrun I got attached to. Like, I've speed speedrun other games before this. Aww. Well, one game before this. And then I started running this game in 2019, and I'm still running today. And it's so much fun. Like, I started with all bosses, and I'm still on all bosses. So, I love this category. That's I love this fun. game. Uh, if anyone wants to learn more about this game, we're all very helpful, and we encourage you to. Well, right now, we're all... We're spreading the all bosses propaganda. So if you want to learn this game, you have to learn all <laughs> bosses. So we have a Discord. There's the Soul Speedrunning Community Discord where we always are very helpful. Anyone has questions like setting up the game, setting up anything. Uh, we try to run events through that whole community. Uh, recently, we had like the Dark Souls 2 birthday like marathon that happened. We do um, different events every once in a while. We also try to organize races and stuff in there, so I encourage anyone who's interested in speedrunning this game to give it a shot. We have a lot of categories. Uh, there's the glitches category, which Hemi runs is really popular. Uh, I'm mean, again, you, you're obligated to run this category if you're watching and you want to learn. Yeah, definitely. Um, and do dragon, <laughs> of course. And you have to do the dragon, put the put on the dragon yeah. head. Uh, I also stream this game like at least five days a week. Copium. You can follow me on Twitch. Uh, I think I'm linked in the title of the stream, maybe. Yes, and and uh, Matt and Hemi are both linked, uh, pinned in the chat for, for those of you who want to follow the Twitch channels. Maybe you've seen my uh, funny memes on Twitter every once in a while. I like to chit-chat on there, follow me. I also run a meme page, but uh, I won't tell you about that one. <laughs> you got to go to the stream uh, to, to figure that one out. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Any uh, thanks so much, guys, for letting me do this. This is uh, this is really cool. I had a lot of fun last time. I had an opportunity to do a run for GDQ, and uh, I'm happy to be here again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you both so so yeah. much for being here. I hope that some of you watching will uh, take on the challenge of all bosses, Dark Souls Three. Uh, maybe I'll be one of them. Who I knows? highly but... encourage it. <laughs> also, Hemi, thank you for being here and uh, <laughs> reminding me to get yes. bonfires and helping me explain <laughs> things when I have to like stare at the screen intently. <laughs> yeah. So. Don't worry about it. Yes, you did amazing. Your... So. Your help was appreciated, Hemi. Matt, it was an amazing run. Thank you both so much for being here. I had a blast. A blast. But before we break, my friends, I want to give a big shout out to all of our amazing supporters. Your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered here on the GDQ Twitch channel help support the Game Zone Quick Hotfix. So if you do enjoy watching this show, Time Capsule, or any of our other Hotfix shows, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can learn more about everything Hotfix at GameStoneQuick.com slash Hotfix. And also, before we break, I do want to mention that GDQ is looking for a special event showrunner to highlight speedrunning communities through weekend specials as we revitalize the GDQ hotfix. So if you are passionate about speedrunning and thrive on organizing gaming events, check out the responsibilities and apply today at gamestonequick.com slash jobs. Thank you again so much for being here, Matt and Hemi. I appreciate you both so much. We will be right back with Mirror's Edge Catalyst, so stay tuned. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. I am your host, Smooth Operative, and you are watching Time Capsule. We are hitting the ground running with our next game, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. So please welcome our runner, Codename Meteor. Hi. Hello. Okay. As a mini <laughs> is going straight into the run, so I can get a quick countdown. Oh, just go straight. Yes. You can feel oh, free to Oh, that's do a good point. I should do the countdown. Ready. Okay. Okay, three, yeah, no two, worries. one, let's go. So, awesome, I guess I'm Meteor. I'm on the board record in, I don't know, most of the categories. And on commentary, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I'm Tirga. I'm a mediocre runner at best for this game. Uh, I don't really do full game runs, but I'm going to do my best to <coughs> explain what's going on in some of these missions. There's a lot of so movement. Much. A lot of movement yeah, stuff, but... Tigger's very good at all the dashes, so we have to explain all the cool things. Sounds good. Nice. Yeah, it's always good to have backup, so I appreciate you both being here, too. Right. 
Okay, so yeah, this is you have to have, you're forced to walk for this section, so a little bit of time, but here you go. Yeah. Alright. This is that's actually just a lot of lot of things, just one off the other, so I'm gonna focus a bit. Sounds so good. You can I can yap between. about <laughs> some of the things that's going on in this mission since uh, Meteor is going to be focusing here. This is the first mission of the game, but it's also one of the hardest because it is very optimized. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice Meteor doing a lot in this run is he's going to be attaching to these walls. He's going to be wall boosting. Oh, oh my god. Unlucky. Uh, anytime that you attach to a wall in this game, the game will give you a bit of movement speed to kind of give you a smooth transition onto the wall. So you will see him uh, just oh, wait. wall boosting quite a bit. Oh my god, I just realized I did not start the mission right. Oh, okay. Starting it back oh. over. Sounds good. <laughs> can, we a little can we reset quickly? <laughs> I started the mission wrong. So. I think we can probably arrange oh, that. He can. Just, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. It's only about a couple minutes, it's fine. Oh yeah, no problem. All good. We get to see the uh, awesome Icarus walk uh, cutscene again. And we get Everyone to missed it the last time. Yeah, yeah, just in case you guys didn't catch it. This is probably the best part of the run, where you stand here and wait in a parkour game. There is a weird amount of waiting in this game. There's also a lot of uh, loading screens. <laughs> but They're trying the to contain you early, and it's not going to work. No. Okay. So now we actually don't have all the movement that I wish I had. Oh, oh, good. Okay. All right, getting back into it. You'll see him wall boosting <laughs> a lot in this run. It's uh, one of the most important tricks used any time that there's basically a wall, as uh, wall boosting is faster than running, and it also allows us to do funny hopping. Which you mm. might see some here soon, but yeah, it's a bit. There's a lot of like weird ground. The thing about B hops is that you have like, you don't get any height off them, so just best on a flat surface. And the B hops in this game also you can't uh, you can't bind jump to a like a scroll wheel or something and really spam the inputs. All the B hops in this game have to be manually timed with a with like space bar or whatever key you use to jump. So, yeah. if the ground does get a little uneven, it, it changes the timing of the b-hops and makes it very difficult. Mm. Right here, Meteor is doing warehouse skip. He's doing an any percent only route. Uh, in other categories, they take a different route, but he's going to climb up on the side here and skip basically the entire tutorial section. Yeah, so that also means that we don't actually unlock any of the attacks, so we have to buy them ourselves later on. A bit weird, but gonna drop down here. You're gonna see Meteor get a big wall boost to clear the scout. Wow, nice! Yeah, got the fast animation. Mm. Very nice. Noah, I sent you on a different route to the tower. All right, he just did a back dash there. Uh, looking backwards and dashing off of a ledge is actually faster than just jumping uh, while looking forwards off of them. So you might see him do that a couple more times during the run. You can technically do that anytime that there's a ledge, but. It can be kind of hard, as there's ledge protection in this game that kind of prevents you from dashing off of a lot of the ledges. Yeah, I'm going to try and get a very specific vault so that I can get up here and get into this building and do a cool jump onto this zip line. Into one of the Ooh, weirdest fancy. looking strats. Looks cool. Doing float glitch here. Gonna float down and he's gonna grab a key checkpoint here with the uh, the butt skip. He's gonna slam Faith's butt into a door and that's gonna make the mission think that we did the entire warehouse here when in reality we just kinda went over the top of it. He is a very, very hot skip. Going for window skip. Yeah, let's go ahead. Oh! Jeez. Oh, you're you insane. Very nice, very nice. But there it's we a wall like, a little oh, bit of a section here. Then we can do a little corner wall climb and get up. So that's basically all of release. Um, okay, now we actually have some time to explain like B hops. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, do you want to explain it? Or? Uh, sure. Yeah. Anytime that you come off of a wall run, um, you can 
basically jump right when you hit the ground and uh, you can bunny hop. It keeps you in that wall run state. Um, like I said earlier, you can't, you can't bind it to scroll wheel to uh, Bambi hops. You have to manually time each one. But um, if you get the B hop, it allows you to keep your speed so you can get a really big boost and just keep that speed throughout the run with uh, B hopping. I believe it's like a three frame window every B hop. Oh, that's close. Yeah. It's not frame perfect, but it's still pretty precise. But yeah, has some weird input protection, so I cannot roll. Hey, I'm going to go for a called a collision boost, where you basically use objects on a wall to not launch. <laughs> They anytime, pop up all the time. Yeah. Anytime that uh, something is sticking out of a wall, you can get what we call a collision boost, or we're just going to shorten it to C boost for the rest of this run because collision is a hard word. Um, <laughs> anytime that you're wall running and something sticks out on the wall, uh, the game will give you a boost of speed to give you a quick transition on from one, you know, the wall that you're running on to whatever is sticking out of the wall. And if you jump off as it as you're transitioning from the wall to the object, it gives you a bunch of speed. And you can jump off, you can keep that speed, you can get some B-hops to maintain that speed. Yeah, B-hops nice. maintain your speed like one-to-one, -one, so it's just great. So that comes into play, I imagine, quite a lot in this run. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Right now, finally got our clothes, and we're introduced to... The most questionable choice the devs made for this game. The skill tree. Skill tree. Let's yeah. go. Oh. If That's a bit of a to, change of pace. Yeah. If you're used to all the movement from Mirror's Edge 1, now it's all behind locked behind a skill tree, so. I'll just run New Game Plus. You don't have to deal with it. Do you eventually unlock everything, or you have to pick and choose throughout any percent? Um, we pick and choose. Okay. But we, there, it gets to a point near the end where we have everything, but... So my best it's a, it's very near the end. Select strategically. Yeah, we have nice. to... The very specific we XP route that we take, and, and we have to get on, like, points. Because we don't want a menu as much, because it loses time. Yeah, I heard. Makes sense. I say that and menuing's never fun. Oh. Don't fall off. Yeah, we're doing probably one of the weird-looking strats where we just sort of teleport by chucking ourselves off the, the edge of it. So looks like we're killing ourselves, but we just teleport. And we had a question come in from chat: How open world would you say this game is? Is it more linear or? It it definitely tries to be open world. It, it falls into this trap of. <laughs> Not like it, you like, never really go back to areas, right? Okay, then that kind of does put it in the more linear category, I guess. Yeah, I definitely think they want it to be you know true open world experience, but it, 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 he's kind of this guy didn't want to make that, sir. <laughs> Normally they just both hit into each other, but he's in, he said no this time. But here's a cool C boost. If I can get it. Oh my god. Okay, this angle is bad. There we go. Very nice. Oh, whoa. Very cool. Meteor actually went for a down action C boost. Um, anytime that you're going for a C boost, you can press jump and jump off of it, but you can also use down action, which is just like the slide, the crouch. It, it, we just call it down action. Um, he specifically goes for a down action C boost right there because a normal jump would send him too far off the edge. So he can down action C boost that, still land on the ground, and then he can punch to maintain that momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, punching has a slower deceleration than walking, so we use it to keep speed like a B hop, but also not. It's better than just standard running, but um, you can't really turn while you're punching. Still is, no. is time save if you can get it. I saw that face. Told you you couldn't fool me. 
Just there help we that go. low cast, Noah. Yeah. She takes after her parents. Uh, this is a very weird thing. You actually want to go slower here because if we start this next mission immediately, there's like a weird buffer for a good while in this where we're still technically in old friends. So if I start this, I would just stop look. As soon as I talk, because I'm fine. I always find that funny when it's like you're trying to speed run the game, but they make you slow down. It's like, we want to slow down. We don't want to. <laughs> Patience never was your virtue, Faith. Yeah, we, there's a we, there's a new way that we do it now. Sort of allows it to be fine, but it still kind of sucks that we have to wait at all. Yeah, I'm going to do a bit of parkour, which skips a very short cutscene, but... Nice backdash. Yeah. Very swag. We're going to do the intended route for Birdman's route, but we're going to do a little cool boost here if I can hit it. I don't hit it. Unlucky. It's like, every C boost, and there's also these what we call TV boosts, have very precise angles you have to take to catch a good one. It'll be quite hard to get in a run. And here, we're teleporting back to release. Because if when we abort release, it actually puts us back into the safe house. And we haven't actually unlocked it yet, so we can teleport to the safe house a bit earlier than we're intended to, so... Very useful, it just means... A loading screen to watch. Oh yeah. The flash I do like the screens. Mirror's Edge uh, logo, though. It's, it's cool. Yeah. Pretty simple, it's quite nice, but... Meteor's gonna be uh, teleporting to missions a lot in this, in this run to just get around the map. Um, so if you're a fan of loading screens... Lock in. It'll be coming, especially later on. So quick travel confirmed. Mm-hmm. Anyway, fast like travel does exist in this game. We just can't use it. <laughs> yeah, this is a cool, cool little mission. This is how like water? flow works. Got the C boost on the delivery box. Not too bad. Got to punch through a couple enemies, but it's actually a weird, weird mission. These first little enemies with this little like box on the right are forced, but then all the rest of the optional. We could do a very cool deep boost. Oh uh, no! Oh, I'm lucky. We're just gonna go for uh, what we call JDM gap here. It's basically just gonna skip the entire second half of the mission because he has already killed all of the enemies that are mandatory. So. Mm -hmm. But it's a very precise wall boost because the amount of like wall that we actually have to do it on is really small. And it's just after a pipe, so it's all kinds of annoying, but. There we go. We can do a little vault at the corner. Not too bad. First try. <laughs> First try, let's go. And then go straight to the end. And just again, we go straight back to release. There's a, a, a couple, most of these like starting missions, we just go back to release because we always have to go back to Zephyr, basically. Every mission is at Zephyr. I like using the conglomerate's tools against it. The billboards are perfect for that. Hacking a billboard sends a clear message to the employees. It's enough if only one of them opens their eyes because of what we show them. Really exhilarating gameplay right here. I know. Really <laughs> showing off we what this done. game's interesting. People Just are gonna, when you thought. People are flooding to play this game right now. <laughs> I'm curious, Meteor, what got you into speedrunning Mirror's Edge Catalyst? Did you originally start with the first game? Or, or tell um, us about that. I actually did start with Catalyst. Okay. Well, I, I played... My grandma introduced me to Mary's Edge 1 when it first came Aww. out. And then I saw like Catalyst 1 on sale and I bought it. And got very, there's um dashes in the game. And they're just very easy ways to get into speedrunning because they're just short time trials with dash, uh, with leaderboards. And you can see everybody. On PC, they're all filled with cheaters, but I remember seeing Wesley DVT. He's an incredible. 
console runner, probably the best console runner ever. And I was just like, I could not believe the times he would get. I just kept messaging him on how to actually, right. how to go fast. And then and you th kind of started going back and forth, yeah. I guess. In, nice. I think, and then like after COVID hit, you know, I had more time and oh yeah, a PC. So I started playing full game and yeah, I, I don't know really know how I got to the point where I actually have all the like world records, but. Time and practice, you must have yeah. had a lot of hours in this game. Yeah, I have about nearly 2.5 thousand on PC. Oh, wow. And then nearly oh, wow. a thousand on console. Now, uh, remind me, we're doing this on PC today? Yes. Okay, great. And I'm curious, does your grandma know that you speedrun the game? Yeah, she nice. does. She watched my, I did an AGDQ run last year. Yes. Uh, New Game Plus, and she was watching. It was great. Very nice. Aww. That's sweet. Yeah, they're very... Well, they're all gamers, my family, so they actually were very supportive. Nice. Supportive, uh, supportive gamer family. I mm -hmm. like that. But here, we have a very, very cool skip that's very hard, so I'm going to quickly focus on. You're just going to go for an uh, elevator skip right here. He grabs the pipe at the very end, allows him to clip into this wall and catch the elevator. Yeah, and then he's just going to clip through the floor. Yeah, and that and just skips a, a door animation, some climbing. Right. This is a weird ride. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're breaking in right now. I don't really know. This mission is pretty cool. Mission. A lot of the previous missions were kind of tutorials, but yeah. now we get some real parkour. Yeah, we're getting into the game now. Yeah, the, a lot of the missions are just trying to introduce how a skill works, but this is not one of those missions. No, I'm Wow, he doesn't miss at all. <laughs> Did you hear that? Someone just got hit. There's a lot of forced events in this game. Kind of slow, but can't do anything. Yeah, here's just some cool vertical movement. It's like horizontal, there's a lot of interesting vertical movement like ledge boards, um, one of wall climbs. Actually make it very versatile in both areas so people can be really good horizontally and really good dashes but then some dashes have like quite a lot of verticality. Which do you good. kind of prefer? Um, I've always really liked the vertical stuff. There's a lot of really cool and annoying things like map turns that have like a very, they sort of lean themselves to like out of bounds movement. So they really help in, game, in this run. Okay. But people like Bowie, Tirga, Frosty have such incredible horizontal movement. I can't even compare myself to. <laughs> a lot of the what do you have horizontal, to say about that, Tiga? A lot of the horizontal yeah, movement in this game just comes down to uh, hitting a nice boost and then continuing the B hops. And if yeah. you mess up the B hops, then it's just uh, holding W. It's it's not too crazy. Vertical <laughs> movement is definitely way cooler in this game. W to win. Oh yeah. Meteor actually did a little uh, a little slow mo animation skip right there by going far left on the glass, which just allows him to skip the slow mo animation. Gonna have another slow mo animation coming up here. Oh, good shot. Now oh, you're good. Okay. I'm just running back to this. Nothing too crazy. This one's cool. I'm trying to think of any cool boosts I can do on this. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm gonna try to go for anything that's pretty swag. 
Didn't yeah, see encouraged. <laughs> There are a lot of very, like, mag boosts that are really hard, but, like, barely save any time, so I'll try go for some. Oh, there's this little boost here that I can go for. Oh. And he hits the B-hops, too, to maintain the speed. Very nice. Jesus, that was a Yeah, that was pretty sick, I can't lie. <laughs> wow, yeah, nicely done. Yeah, I had to do the boost in a very, very specific way where I had to down action as I hit it and also jump, which allows you to extend the jump a bit, which allowed me to did you hit that beat chain. Now I'm curious about something, Meteor. There mm -hmm. is like that red kind of... I don't know what it is, like a force that you that you follow. Is that something that you have to like press to, to get it to show um, up or does it always... Yeah, this, this is just so this is what's called runner's vision. Okay. It's basically sort of like the GPS of the game and it's trying to just show you where to go. So do you activate wow. that manually? No. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I was really unlucky. Yeah, but he had the know. insane fan boost right there. I know, I want to <laughs> get the B the B house. It gives me a second chance to get it actually. Yeah, yeah. We'll try it again. Oh wow, well, wait, what? How far back did I get, did it put me? If you ever have a long death screen, it's bad news. But yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, no, runner's vision is just not really to help people that don't actually know their way around. I didn't even realize I had it on. To be honest. Oh, so it's something that you just enable in like the menu or something. Yeah, it's it's sort okay. of like a help thing, but. Yeah, no worries. It, it's um in the original Mirror's Edge, you know, there's the follow the red. It's sort of that concept, but more of a physical object. Yeah. Here we go. Start a dash. There's two reasons why we need XP because when we finish a dash, well, we get three stars in a dash. We get 150 XP. And also, we can use it later in the run to teleport. Which will be very handy, because you don't have to just rely on safe houses or anything. But, fun fact that the servers went down for this game on December of last year, and for whatever reason, you cannot get XP from dashes anymore without a mod, so... Very weird. Yo, do you know who made that mod? <laughs> me oh that's crazy <laughs> oh Thanks for that, buddy. so you do so you do make mods for the game meteor that's very cool yes i'm i'm a computer science student so a lot of like i do enjoy game hacking so this game like combining like, my love for this game and also just computer science is very fun it also made the uh main trainer the, the speedrun trainer that we use oh Whoa. excellent Nice. For the last enemy of that combat, Meteor intentionally knocked that guy into the environment because uh, the last enemy of com or yeah, the last enemy of combat in this game, you'll get like a little takedown animation cutscene type of deal, kind of like you'd get in Skyrim. Uh, but if you knock them into the environment or kill them with the environment, uh, it'll skip that. The takedowns are really cool, but they're not fast, so we don't care about them for the speedrun. Right. Now I'm wondering, uh, we had someone ask about the pause buffering on the slopes. Could oh, one yeah. of you maybe explain that? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> do you want to do it, Midian? <laughs> I can. Um, basically, it's not really known to like exactly why, but whenever you pause, it like it sets your like state to like sort of just the normal grounded state. So whenever you sort of set into this slope state, if you just pause you just immediately get set back so if we just time our pauses while moving up a slope we can just skip the animation or the state and walk up any slope we can also do it in a couple of other ways like gliding but those won't come into play until quite late, quite late into the run but oh yeah you'll see some sliding up slopes it allows us to just go up slopes when we need it there's a lot of 
it's, it's it doesn't come up in the run that much, but very cool. Sure, yeah, I was definitely curious. We're going All back right. to release. This I think this is one of the final times we actually go back to release. We actually get a break from all these loading screens. But we're also about to do introduce everybody to the craziest tech that this game. So if anybody's familiar with this game, there's a cool new tech that was discovered in 2022. And it's got a lot of loading screens, but it has some really cool uses. So we're going to go meet Plastic and help her out with something. I, I really don't know the lore of this game, and I think I should, because I've beat the game so many times. <laughs> when was the last time you played it casually, Meteor? Casually? Oh, I don't even... Oh, I'm not in like three years. Oh well, yeah, that's enough time to maybe uh, become a little fuzzy on the details. What about you, Turga? Do you remember a little bit about the lore in this game? Uh, I don't, and I can't even say that I know anybody <laughs> in the community that uh, is a lore buff. I'm sure there, I'm oh, sure there wow. are some people, but uh, this is definitely a game people play for the movement, not for the amazing story. Well, that, that's fair. I mean, the movement's very cool, so makes sense. Yeah, compared to Mirrors of Juan, this game gets a lot of hate. Why do you think that is? I think there's a lot of ways that this game takes a step back from Mirrors One. Mirrors One, like the movement is so different. It's a lot more unrealistic than Mirrors Edge One was going for. It's very like floaty and flowy, whereas Mirrors Edge One is like it just it doesn't hold you back, doesn't help you out. I imagine not having every ability right away is probably like frustrating too for some of the, you know, OG yeah. mirrors, edge Especially runners. If you, yeah. You go in expecting you can, you know, you can war on a bunch. You just, you'll be let down, unfortunately. Yeah. And I, I, th I always view in my head that this game is sort of separate entirely to the first mirror's edge because they are so different. I would ask how the stories connect, but I know y'all won't have an answer for me. I, oh, no. I think we, they, we they do. don't. Do yeah, they? Yeah, they don't. Oh. They don't, no. yeah. Okay. They don't. Catalyst is a the complete reboot of the Mirror's Edge franchise. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. The more you know. It, this game, so Mirror's Edge 1 is based off a novel, I think. And this game is based off a sort of a comic book called Mirror's Edge Exordium. Okay. So they're based on two different stories. People, I think a lot of people wanted this game to be a, a sequel, but it was. People say it's a prequel, but it doesn't. So I don't know. Okay, here I'm gonna cancel the challenge while doing this event, which allows me to. Um, so normally when I cancel dashes, if you teleport to them, it will teleport you back to where you were, but. If I cancel them during an animation, it doesn't actually put me back, so I can just teleport to a dash, go into animation, cancel, and then be able to teleport. Very nice. Now we move on to one of the shortest missions in the entire game. Mm-hmm. Avant Extraordinaire. We have a key checkpoint over here at the very end, which will override all of the uh, checkpoints that are normally in the mission. So Meteor is basically going to go here to the very end of the mission. He's going to hit the checkpoint, and the game is going to think that we did the entire mission. And then he's just going to walk right out, and the mission will be over. Yeah. It's a big oversight that the devs made, but it makes this very short. Which, I actually enjoy this mission normally. There it is. Doesn't matter. Out of um, out of curiosity, have mm -hmm. the devs commented at all on this speedrun? Yes. So 
there are a few members, a few devs that are actually very involved with the speedrun community. So, Slice Lime is now, I believe, the lead developer at Minecraft Java Edition, but he was the, I think, one of the lead devs, and he was very involved around 2016 2017. He actually helped a lot with a couple of glitches. He, they didn't want to, they obviously didn't give us, give us, give us much information, but they actually helped sure, us with yeah. a big glitch. That is cool though. And Emma um, AGDQ ran, Slice Lion did, um, he was watching, I think he donated, and another, I think a lead, like AI developer commented as well, which is very cool. Oh yeah, that is cool. Very, very nice when the devs get yeah. involved. Okay, and just there I did actually the main glitch where we basically left the mission zone and re reloaded at a very specific point. Which puts us in this glitch state where the game thinks we're in free roam, but we're actually still in the mission. So if you're familiar with Mission Zero in GTA 5, this is the same concept. And we can do, you can teleport to a safe house in the mission, we can die apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you actually can. You can. Yeah, you uh, can. That's a good point. That comes yeah. to the. If you want to explain. All the damage. Yeah, yeah, sure. So this trick is called a property load. He basically walked out of the mission and uh, reset the mission at the same time, so it puts him in a free roam state. It allows him to teleport, and it also allows him to override all of the mm -hmm. standard mission checkpoints with uh, death checkpoints. Generally, mm -hmm. in a mission, you know, there'll there'll be certain checkpoints that the developers place wherever but we can instead just make our own checkpoints by standing still for a couple seconds and if we end up dying uh it'll teleport us right back there mm -hmm. very useful certain there's a couple missions later on where there's really like, there'll be checkpoints that set you back minutes but instead we can just get set back a couple seconds which is very handy okay. there's a very precise war run which allows us to hit this button through the wall Give her a bit of a section. And that is basically the most of the mission. We just have to In the teleport one more time. Proud, and because of this weird property state, we actually somehow prevent terrorism, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But also, everybody yeah. still thinks that it happened, so it. I don't know. It's mass so hysteria. Not cool. <laughs> not cool with mass hysteria. <laughs> yeah, see, because if you, as soon as we get this cutscene, it'll look like she would think that the building exploded, but nothing happened. But I don't really know what she's, she's going on about. But. Someone had brought up uh, if this tech was replacing old fly trap skip. I'm not sure oh, how to comment okay. on that, I... but. <laughs> That I don't who 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 said who knows about that? But, <laughs> Spacey uh, L1. I see Spacey. Shout, okay, I, shout um, us to, to Spacey again. <laughs> I won't spoil it, but maybe. It might make <laughs> okay, Flytrap fair. a very interesting mission now. Keeping secrets, I see. <laughs> hey, we got we, there. We're Only close. We're close. Yeah. We just got Benefactor. And then we got Flytrap. Yeah, Flytrap used to be this sort of like big hurdle in the run, like it'd be like the first half of the run pretty easy, then you get to Flytrap, and that would sort of be the decider for the run. Oh, so heavy it, reset point, yes, I guess? the skip oh, with okay. skip is incredibly precise, and everybody hated it. I uh, actually tried fight skip a couple, couple months ago uh, while I was streaming this game, and I had uh, a runner, Balan, walking me through it. it. Took me about an hour to get it first try, or first oh, time wow. trying it. Pretty tough. Yeah, Pretty annoying. Open? Why is it open? <laughs> but still, you, the fact that you were able to get through it with some, uh, I guess, text guidance—that's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. But now, uh, not cool enough that we're gonna do it in this run. We're just gonna skip the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> no need. No need. There this is, is actually partly. A Partly a pla pacifist playthrough. We're gonna yes. skip combat as much as we can. Okay. It looks like I just failed, but... Why... Why... Why did it not give me any animation? Oh wait, did I not... Oh, of course I didn't start this cutscene, so... 
Ugh. I always forget this. There's this is one cutscene that. It's a toxic face. Whatever. I forgot. Whoa, what happened? What? I don't know what's happened here. I, I messed up the order of things, so something's weird, but. Yeah. Yeah, the certain cutscenes are tied to. Um, certain things. It's just because I got this glitch that will explain later, but it teleported me straight to the trigger of the cutscene, so it like kind of messed up the uh -huh. load order of things. Fine. Now, do the do the loading screens count towards the final time uh, no. usually in runs? Okay, so they're removed. They are removed for the most part. There is some controversy with this, where we actually abuse loading screens. So certain time um, tricks, we actually have to wait on the game like loading, or so we have to wait for a cutscene to start. Oh. We actually will purposefully die and. Alt tab to lengthen a long sc loading screen, because when we're in loading screens, everything still happens in the background, but time the live split is paused. Which is right. It's a very controversy because it look like different hardwares have different like timings as well. So it's like mm -hmm. it's it's messy. Oh, I tell you, we finally get the the Spider Man mag rope. Yeah, Benefactor is one of the cool missions because you actually get to mag, mag, all everywhere. Definitely one of the coolest missions in the entire run. It yes. has some unique tech, but um, most of the movement in this entire mission is uh, vertical. So mm -hmm. We get to see a lot of cool do climbing. You, do you think that one of you could explain perhaps how you get the extra height on wall climbs while the camera is turning? Uh, you want to do that, Meteor? I guess wait, 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 I don't understand the question. I guess like I think he's talking about uh, when we Q turn. Q turn. Extended. Oh, okay. So normally, when you wall climb in Q turn, you're expected to just go backwards because the Q turn is 180 degrees. But if you're like if you sort of pull the camera enough, you can actually just make Faith go forwards and go towards the wall, which allows us to Q turn and gain a bit of extra height off a. Wall, run, wall climb. So it's normally called a wall climb extend because we extend a wall climb, but you can also. There's, there's some intricacies. You can map turn and coil and get even <laughs> more height. Oh, yeah. Multiple um, ways to get extra height. But it basically just. We're just using the Q turn to go in a direction we're not really supposed to. So I printed a prop reload. It's a bit of a different prop reload where we like sort of die and do it at the same time, but same thing as in what happened in Grid Node Run. But we the use for it, this is probably considered the hardest skip in the game. It doesn't lose any time if I fail it. But it's incredibly precise, and I'm gonna go for it, because it's kinda cool if I hit it. Very nice. Oh, okay. you hit a invisible C boost right there. Mm -hmm. Clear that gap. Some weird collision in the corner, so we can just boost off it. Yeah, but this skip was actually discovered by accident by me. I was just <laughs> messing around and did it by accident once, and I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. So it didn't take too much time to recreate? No, I, I knew, well, I sort of understood how it worked. As soon as I saw it, but we basically got a so death checkpoints. You get one, you get one every sort of three seconds where you're touching the ground, and when we're hitting that button, we create one. And as long as we don't create another one, and then sort of hit, I'll, I'll explain it as we go along. But sure, yeah, we we don't want to create another because it's down there, and then we don't. We have to basically exit the elevator using a very precise trick and then die and we'll respawn at the bottom of the elevator and fall and hit a checkpoint and it skips a long elevator ride and it's a very very cool it's one of the i think it's the most recent prop reload discovery most of the discoveries nowadays are just new ways to use a prop reload right 
Okay, here. Yeah. Oh, no. Jeez. Oh, I did. I did it. I made... Oh, oh my god. Wow. Very nice, these, very nice. These don't... <laughs> I beg that I didn't overwrite my death checkpoint. So, if all went right, you should just see me falling. Yes. And as soon as I go past this black, I can teleport to the safe house. And we just skip the entire elevator ride. That is easily the Ooh. hardest trick in the entire game. Oh dude, my gosh, GG on that. Yeah, yeah dude, good, this is, good stuff. I don't want to call him out, but this guy messed up that trick in every <laughs> single practice run we did. So I've never even seen that. That was really cool. Awesome. Um, now, yeah, I was saying, I hope I get it in the actual run because I've failed it every time. Yeah, that takes so much time. <laughs> that was awesome. And now we're going to buy trap. And actually, this is where the original prop reload was covered. So, prop reload just stands for propagations reload. <laughs> Pretty simple. We don't. We're not really good at naming things. <laughs> it's either. I mean, something skip are or fine. name reload. Found by our good, uh, good buddy in the community, propagations. Yeah, he's a uh, incredible one hundred runner, and he basically. I remember being in a Twitch chat watching Mazku, and he had this idea outside of the game, went into the game, and it worked. And it just sort of snowballed into like the most influential trick of like, I was like four years. Oh wow, nice. That is really cool. Here I'm going to do a mag boost. There oh, we go. First try, awesome. That, I also failed that in most of the practice runs. <laughs> <laughs> He performs better when the pressure's on him. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Yeah, we're finally on fly trap. So this prop reload is actually the one of the few ones that has a name. It's called Gerald. We we, we gave it a human name because I don't know. Gerald, huh? Yeah. Interesting. This is I mean, that's the sort of for Alex. Alex calls it Gerald, and that's for him. So here, Hello, we're going to prop reload. Yes, shout outs to Alex. Hi. Yeah, Alex, like, sexy OG runner, incredible runner. Oldest runner. Boomer <laughs> runner. <laughs> so there we go. We went into the prop reload state. And if you're familiar with Flytrap, you're going to notice that everything is wrong and everything is easy. So we did this. That's called a Jackie Chan because... If you're familiar with it, you know, Jackie Chan movies like Rush Hour, he tends to just do a lot of weird parkour, like going down, sort of things like that. So here, we actually call the elevator. In the normal mission, this elevator is replaced with a very slow moving elevator that we skip. But we, it's the one, this is normally just in free roam, the game thinks we're in free roam. We actually just get to use it. It's incredible. That probably saves like 30 seconds on its own. And then, because we can teleport to safe houses, we're going to teleport to Zephyr. And then we're going to go and run. Shoot. Yeah, this has been a really fun run so far. Thank you both again for being here. I'm, I'm enjoying of course, this. Of course. Yeah, thank you for the invite. Yeah, it was very cool. I really like showcasing this in this. Oh my god, I stumbled. Sorry, I'm a bit tired. I actually love showcasing this game. Um... It's really unique. Oh, wait. Oh, geez. Popping off. Oops. Oh, okay. nice. Okay, Peter just hit. had to... Uh, Ooh. He just had to run back there to grab a checkpoint real quick. And now we get another loading screen going back to Zephyr. Speedy speed. But yeah, this game, it doesn't really have many runs, unfortunately. Runners sort of, sort of died down since 2020. It's sad, but... Do you think it's just to do with the age of the game and maybe not not as many people are playing it? I, d I definitely think that. I, I There was a lot of like hate against the prop reload strat. It like, a lot of older runners were, were sort of unfamiliar with it. So when it came around, people sort of moved away from the game, but... Didn't want to bother with some of yeah, the new stuff. But it just hasn't That's been many new runners. I think, I don't know. People, there's like, there's a lot of people doing dashes, but not all people doing full game, unfortunately. What are the resources like nowadays for a new runner? Like, are there guides and, and things like that? Oh, wait, 
I in fly trap? Oh, I'm in fly trap. I was, right, right. I was very confused what happened, but I'm just being. Um, oh yeah, go ahead. Are you there yet? I just here. The resources aren't great, but the community there, oh, you can very easily ask for help. I have been thinking about because I'm about to go off to university, and I'm not gonna have enough time to really focus all my energy on this game. But I do want right. to make a big game tutorial before I go. Just to help out any newer runner. It would be a challenge, but it would be very cool. And then you would uh, maybe influence a, a new world record holder. I in the really, future. yeah, I really hope so. <laughs> if anybody is interested in running the dashes in this game instead of full game runs, uh, Faux Shop on YouTube has a great back to basics set, uh, series where he explains mm -hmm. a lot of the movement tech. Uh, he's got a he's got no board on screen, so you can see his inputs and all that, and he explains a lot of the the stuff for. For dashes and all of that will translate into full game runs. Not all of it, yeah. but I mean, I always love when they put a like no board or inputs on the screen. It's so helpful. Yeah, I always have no board in any of my tutorials. It's just it's so handy, just so you can make sure you're doing all the right inputs. But yeah, Photoshop, incredibly, pretty like such. He's like a robot when it comes to this game. You can do like. <laughs> A hundred B hops in a row and not even break a sweat. God gamer. Oh yeah. Yeah. But... Doing another Maz port there to prevent getting teleported back. Mm-hmm. Sort of big tech. That was also a lot of the tech like prop reload and Maz port were just stuff they did a hundred percent and then they realized we could do it in any percent. And they see the much time. So that's named after Mazku. Mazku teleport. Asport. Works out. Another genius name. Okay, here. Actually, I'm gonna... We're gonna Slingshot. do a very specific trick. I'm gonna try Let's it. Go. It's never been done in a run because it's so annoying. Oh. Ah, oh, that was so close. Uh, I, if I had just had a bit more height, it would have been it. But basically, when you Q-turn on a ledge like this, you can actually gain speed. And if I do it in a very specific way, I can launch myself into the checkpoint or onto this pillow down here. Which saves a, a bit of time, but it looks so cool. Is it something that's like mm, usually an IL kind of strat? No, it's not even that. It's so like, the trick is so un not like understood at all that nobody wants to go for it. Uh, and I'm okay. also the person that has the IL world, rec world record on this. And I will not Great. go for this. <laughs> very RNG, but very cool at the same time. There's a... I recently found a trick for it in a dash, which is like really, really stupid. But just, it's, there's like no use cases for it at all, unfortunately. So like very specific like variables you need for it to actually save time. Right. It's funny when, when those things are found. It's like, hey, look at this cool thing, but I don't know where else we can apply it. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of things like that in this game where it's just like... Yeah. There's a tech that I recently found where you can basically float in place. And it's like got like one use and it's really stupid. But... Oh my God, <laughs> give me this boost, babe. This okay. uh, he boost he was gone there. Going yeah. There. There's... There's also a difference between, there's like, some, if, if you ever see that I start a C boost right next to the edge of a wall, it's basically what we call a TV boost, where some objects Faith won't be able to wall run over, like as Faith, um, Chico was saying, where normally that gives you a boost of speed to transition. If we start the wall run right in the corner, right next to it, it will forcibly, like, give us the speed to go over it. Because, I don't know, it like needs the war to keep going, so we can get a bunch of speed off them. But they're very precise, they're normally only left to ILs and dashes because... Precise... Like, very precise strats here. Ew. Some task kind of things. It would be oh, so yeah. cool if this game had a task, man. <laughs> that was my next question, actually. I mean, every time it... The conversation comes up, people just ask me, and I'm like, I don't even know how I'd even do that. Mer if anybody, if no, anybody's, oh my god, no, what am I trying to say? 
If you've never watched a Mirror's Edge 1 task, you watch a Mirror's Edge 1 task. That, 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 it's crazy. Black November has grown considerably in the last few years. I wish we had the tools like that. But maybe one day. Yeah, there's still time. Plenty of time. Oh, get the oh I didn't get the zip boost. Oh. Lucky. The big, uh, one of the big problems is that this game is on the Frostbite engine, which is a proprietary engine from EA. So a lot of like, while like Unreal Engine, you know, it's open source. I think it's open source. I don't know. It's got a lot of documentation, and there's so much willing for that game, for that engine. Where Frostbite is a bit, bit of a dark horse, you know. The only main thing is Frosty Editor, which is very limited in what you can do. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. And to Vive, I believe. We need an explosion there. That explosion will be our lure. There's gonna be a lot of uh, decent amount of out of bounds for this mission. Yeah, this is there's a, quite a few missions in the game where you just go out of bounds for a good while. Nice. I'm excited for that. It's my favorite. Yeah, this game hasn't had much. I don't think we've been out of bounds much yet. So. Uh, I guess you went out of bounds in Benefactor. Oh yeah, that's a good point. But it's gonna be very obvious here. Yeah, yeah. Good go. Bit of precise. Move. This double run is weirdly precise, but we did it. There. Look at that. Over here. This next area, this is a skip called Trexpo Skip. It's a very it's named after Trexpo. We're not skipping Trexpo. But in New Game Plus we actually started skipping it recently because a newer version was found. Called anybody can guess it? Trexpo skip skip. Oh, skip whoa. skip, okay. <laughs> yeah, like... Skip in the skip. It makes sense. Yeah, you know, sometimes those those kind of names, they just stick because it is what it is. Yeah. Trexpo, the thing is that Trexpo Skip is so legendary that we just want to keep the name there, just for all time's sake. Oh, for sure. So, okay, here we go. Here's the first bit we got about. So, we do a very specific climb, and I'm doing this specific climb here. So, I do a map turn. Um, I'm going to explain map turns in a bit, just after we do... Finish all the out of bounds still. So you see, we start, we hit a trigger, and now we're out of bounds. And we just do a bit of very precise climbing. Here's another wall climb extend, and we use a coil, because coiling gives us a tiny bit more height. So for times that we barely miss, we can actually just coil and grab it. Oh. Bad. Finally back in bounds now, but mm -hmm. don't worry. We'll head back out of bounds here soon enough. We just gotta hit yeah. a checkpoint. So I was saying earlier, map turns, maps, like when you actually enter the map, you think if you were to move around, like turn your camera in the map, nothing would happen in game, but the genius devs actually, the top map camera is tied to Faith's camera. So if I turned around in the map, Faith will turn around. Which means okay. interesting things. So I, if I do it during a Q turn, I can make Faith go forward. And if I coil, I can actually get some vertical height off it. And it's very useful for certain climbs. Yeah. Go ahead. Light mm -hmm. skip. Mm -hmm. know, who, uh, know who found that skip right there? <laughs> Me. Also done by Meteor. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice. And the genius name of light skip, it doesn't even skip a light, it just involves a light. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> it works. Stuff. That uh, little panel that he just hit there is, uh, that's one of the key checkpoints. So as soon as he hits that, the mission will realize that we're actually almost all the way through the mission. It'll update everything and we can go ahead and finish the mission out here. Yeah, if that key checkpoint wasn't there, we actually wouldn't be able to do track post skip. We skip a bunch of checkpoints. Thank you for dev oversight. Very good. Never tire of being a runner. You could always become a crane operator, Icarus. 
And we got some cool, more weird ice movement. Right, go deal with the second terminal and stay on the springboard that's like really annoying. And you with that Trace Landfall game always struggles with that springboard. Go out of bounds one more time in this mission. You don't want to let go, it's fine. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Then we're just going to climb up here and jump to the last trigger of the mission. Oh, that was quite a leap of faith. I know. No pun intended. <laughs> bit scary but I sometimes I feel like I'm gonna miss it but you it's so hard to miss it that's good that's good now we're on to payback and it's the, one of the most weird looking tricks especially if you're familiar with the game a fighter in you after all um so if you want to explain what is about to go down Togo. uh yeah so meteor is First off, this is payback. Fun fact, you can't replay this mission after you've done it, but Meteor is going to start off this mission by teleporting to Metagrid, and he's going to die, which will put us in a weird state, which will allow us to warp to the uh, trigger at the end of payback. And it's basically going to allow him to skip all of the fighting and just mm -hmm. kind of instantly complete the mission. So, as I was alluding to earlier, where, you know, the devs were helping us with glitches, this is a glitch that was wouldn't it be found without their help because we found the glitch like we found like it's very obvious when you have this glitch because you literally like warp for, like warp huge distances and we found that but we couldn't figure out how to reliably do it and i believe i can't remember exactly what went down but they told us it was with meta grid and eventually we figured it out all you do is start meta grid any meta grid finger on the pole set it to the ground they all have really annoying names just kill yourself right as you start it and you get put in this weird state. A lot of okay. very fun loading screens here. Yeah, I kind of lied. I thought <laughs> there wasn't any more release, but there was. It's a, always one to surprise you here and there, I imagine. <laughs> I, I do have a surprise loading screen later on that we added okay. in just before this. You, it's it's a very cute surprise. So. There it was. There was the warp glitch. Loaded yeah, in, yeah, instantly teleported. Normally there's a big fight, and then you can do the antenna, but with that glitch we can just skip all the fight. Like we said, we're a pacifist, except when we're forced to kill. Pretty much. The pacifist I do run actually, is saved for now. I want to try a pacifist run, but it seems impossible. <laughs> It's just a kind of bit of just running away from k -Sec. Cool mag. There's cool, some cool boosts in this little corridor here, so hopefully I can actually get some. I got one there. It wasn't very fast, but it was kind of cool. Here's another. Okay, I kind of hit it. Kind of. There's another here. <laughs> I got like weird, very slow boosts, but technically. And then we're just gonna do coiling, because coiling always gives us more height. And then much back. Much faster yeah. than climbing the ladder there. Mm -hmm. Much, much and faster. The, the colors the colors in this game are really quite pleasing to the eye. I uh I think it's really great. Yeah, the especially the I think it's called Regatta Bay. That that area is beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful areas. Yeah, they put a lot of love into uh, designing this game. Yeah, there's definitely a, a lot of hard work put into this game. Especially how it looks. The Mirror's Edge style is so iconic. Disappointed? Mm -hmm. I don't care either way. You'll be dead This soon. is, um... My father will have this place raised to Kate, the ground. I don't know. Anything for his daughter. Um, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to spoil who that is. We'll find out. If yeah, you don't we'll, know. We'll check in. We'll check in later. Yeah, I mean, the whole, I hate actually how they show us, like, how they reveal that. 
major story piece. I you just passed it going. I found out this. And it's like, oh my god. A lot of people actually hate plastic, even to the point where Balan, who is an incredible, pretty easily one of the best wargame game runners, um, will run the game in Spanish just so he doesn't have to hear her. Oh, yeah. Spanish plastic is a, a bit more bearable. Especially if you can't speak Spanish. Her voice Especially sounds because very speak Spanish. terrible. Early on in this mission, while Meteor was on the zip, he bought some of the intel upgrades because uh, this is one of the few missions where we are forced to do combat, so the pacifist run is going to be over. But mm -hmm. we, we had a good run. Yeah. But there's some really cool tech. There's um, we did it earlier, but it was so like brief. But there's something called a door drop. I will explain it when we get to it, but it's very precise and everybody hates it. But. <laughs> you hate it until you hit it first try. And yeah, it's awesome. true. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is where dash runners will thrive because we just follow the route of a dash for like 30 seconds. Hey, I've done this before. Yeah. So this has got some, it's called a mag boost, I think. We haven't, we haven't done a mag boost yet. Oh, we have done one actually. Yeah. yeah. But we haven't done one that actually gives us some cool speed. Nice. Yeah, see, Very cool. Launch up. We'll do you know, the really mix. cool ones later on. Yeah, punching. Preserve momentum. Worth noting, you, you can't B hop out of a mag boost, so the fastest available option to us is punching to maintain the speed. Mm -hmm. Sure, I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah, outside of B hopping, it's either sliding or punching, but sliding, you lose all your speed very fast. So you tend not to slide, but if you're on console, you actually can't punch during dashes, so they actually have to slide. Oh, interesting. PC exclusive stuff. I know. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> well, punch, or it I feel sucks. bad, but... <laughs> yeah. I'll still use it. It's so silly. No. Dude, the, the punch button is the same button as the reset dash button. And they yeah. can't They can't, they can't it. switch it. Now, I'm curious. Does that mean there are separate categories for, no. like, consoles? I mean, the, the oh, console okay. runners consider themselves sort of separate. Like, they will... When, like, one of them gets the best time, you know, it's a console world record, but... But it, the leaderboard is shared. The leaderboard is shared, yes. Okay. But on like the global leaderboards that EA had, um, they were all separate. Fortunately, and, uh, console had no cheaters, so they're legit yeah. leaderboards. Excellent to hear. But the servers were shut down last year. But there is an effort. I'm a part of a project called uh, Beat Revival to revive the beat and actually have custom servers. Okay. So hopefully we get that up and oh, running. Oh yeah, that would be. That'd be awesome. Any like ETA on when there, maybe that would happen? It's it's hard to say. There's a lot of work sure. to do. We want like something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. I didn't think I would see a <laughs> little fella here. That early. Who's hey, that buddy? little fella? <laughs> yeah, it's got <laughs> I forgot a lot. Um, <laughs> we. <laughs> There he is again. Well, <laughs> I believe that's for this entire mission, isn't it, Meteor? It's it's it won't come up again. Oh, very sad. Who who is the cutie? It's literally just a cat. I turned black and white. Oh, I got a first <laughs> try. Oh, oh, first God. try. Let's go. I, I haven't got a first try. Has blessed one. us. Very yeah. nice. Prevents the death and allows him to open the door there. So, a lot of time saved. Excellent. Just skip the entire. Yeah, there's a lot of checkpoints in this mission that you can just sort of hit and f die and still... There he is again. <laughs> but... It feels like I'm staring into my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Meteor did it there again, though. That was an intentional death to grab yes. the checkpoint at the bottom. So here we're gonna do another float because this is, this is actually a really cool area. It's like a beautiful area. I'm sorry to the dev who like painstakingly set this all out. Cause I skip it all. But it's a really cool area. I took so many screenshots on my first playthrough. 
through this game of this area. Oh, I bet. Very pretty. I, too, am a screenshot fiend, so <laughs> I get it. There are some real... If you really like the art of this game, um, there's a, something called the Mirror's Edge Archive, which is an archive of stuff from both games. And there's a lot of really cool cost concept art from really talented artists that work on this game. So I'd recommend checking that out. And it's a web, it's a website? Or? Yeah, it's a sort of like a, if you're familiar with like Internet Archive, it's sort of a fan made version oh, yeah. of that. But okay, cool. filled with just Mirror's Edge content. So if you're actually really interested in Mirror's Edge content, there's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I'll have to get the link from you after the run. Yeah, yeah, of course. There's a lot of cool uh, stuff for this game. We actually discovered, I think it was last year, or 2022, there was a, a prototype version that got released. Um, someone found it like a, from a PS4 dev kit. And oh, that's it so cool. revealed a lot of cool behind the scenes of the development of this game. Like, there were cutscenes that we could see, like, the mocap, because, you know, they were, like, placeholders so that the animators could work on it's a lot of cool stuff. Right. I love it when things like that just yeah. end up seeing the light of day. It's so cool. Recently, I think this is unrelated, but there's a Mirror's Edge 1 dev um, prototype version that was been not found, but we know it exists. And hopefully that gets released soon. That would be really cool. Uh Oh, yeah, fingers crossed. Because the only Mirror's Edge 1, there's, only, there's two Mirror's Edge 1 prototypes, and one of them got corrupted. So, bad times. But that was PX. We did a fight. Not too bad. That was the unskippable yeah. fight that, mm -hmm. you know, we had to ruin our pacifist run with. But <laughs> It is what it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. Moving on to what is, what's up next? Thy Kingdom Come? Yes, Thy Kingdom Come. So Noe was taken in... Fightrap? Was that Fightrap? Uh, I think so. Um, and now we're gonna go and find him. He is somewhere. Some secret place. We immediately... That Dogen somehow knows. I don't really know. This guy is weird. I think he, like, served, like... There's a lot of weird lore about this guy. Like, didn't he, like, serve, like, human meat to people? Oh my goodness. I don't know, man. I think he, like, served them weird meat to, like, get them addicted and then... Make them come back. It was, it was. I just know that uh, he has like Faith's mom's blueprints or whatever, and she wants him for a sick tat. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, Rebecca's in in the table. She just has part table for some reason. I don't judge her. Yeah. So that's we just revealed that Caitlyn Connor's our sister. Plastic just revealed it. No big story moment. Plastic just says it. That's funny. That's a funny way to reveal. Yep. Yeah. Where is it? I think there was a lot of um. In there's like a lot of development with this game. Like you can see the first build in Unreal Engine, and we could have had a very different game. But I wonder, can you walk around in that early build? In the what? In the early build, can you like actually walk around in it and like get in the the early build of the game, or just um, videos? Just videos. Okay. Right Unfortunately, on. the earliest version we have is a 2015 build. I think. Okay. This game came out in cool. June of 2016, so pretty old. But it would be cool oh, to cool. see. So I I love seeing the behind the scenes of Dev like what went through the mind in cool early like concepts but. oh definitely always cool to figure that stuff out trying to hit a cool boost here come on Faye. really really fast c boost that he can hit here yeah it gives like the fastest c boost in the game but uncontrollably to... fast what <laughs> okay which we'll come back to it another time yeah next yeah year. it's like <laughs> it's so fast it's like I can't even react when I get it. <laughs> like, one second I'm there, the next second I'm at the end of the hallway, and it's just like, okay. Um, but, this is weird, but I'm gonna do a little shout out to the Mirror's Edge Initiation Project, which is sort of what people wanted this game to be. It's just sort of gonna be a continuation of the first game. So, 
if you want a Mirror's Edge 2, follow that project. It's a complete fan-made project that aims to have 10 levels that are going to be sort of bigger than the original game. With oh, nice. With all cutscenes and everything. It's going to be really cool. So that's something maybe going to be released this year? Um, no. It's no. been in the <laughs> okay. works for like years and they are about to release the demo hopefully this year. Oh. That's be the hey, first three levels. So we actually will get to play it sometime soon, but yeah. not Having a demo still would be yeah. epic. Yeah. But I'm not really a part of that project, but I keep up. There's a lot of cool, there's a lot of talented people and, um, the oh. community for the game. Very nice. Yeah, I did a little 360 wall boost there. It's really cool. And then I felt pretty tough trick. Faves. Yeah. <laughs> how much time does it even take? I like don't even know how much. I don't think. I don't, not much. Just a casual swag 360. No biggie. Yeah. Here we got more out of bounds. I don't know if there's any more out of bounds. I guess. No, I have some out of bounds. Yeah. But. It's using... I actually don't think we explained kick clipping. Oh. Oh, sorry. you're right. Actually, we were we were yapping too much during Benefactor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I guess, feel free. You want me to get this? Or do you want to... Yeah, you can go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, sure. Okay, so anytime that uh, Faith kicks, it kind of... It puts her hitbox into like a crouching hitbox, and it also slightly extends it. So, um, you'll see... You can use it to get inside of vents, like right here. Very nice. Oh, the, you have to get, get far very enough. far. You have to kick just late enough so that you can coil upwards and go out of bounds. Uh, and then we're going to hit a trigger with my butt, like we did in Bud Scoop. And then we can just kick this corner. Very falls. nice. Very, very easy uh, time save. We also do that during yeah. dashes at the very end, just to slightly extend our hitbox. And Which is also PC exclusive. exclusive. That is, yeah. They can't that kick either. Awesome. Um, this game is pay to win if you have a PC. <laughs> Just spend <laughs> $500 on a PC and you can save time. Nah, we love all our console runners. So. There we go. There, there are a lot of talented console runners. Karmic, uh, Hot, Hot House Bat. Oh yeah, nice guy. Wesley. Wesley but he's on yeah. PC now. Yeah, but still, he's like, well, he can, he can do like the, he can beat us on PC though, so. That's, that's true. He, is, uh, he was on console and he game. had like every world record for a brief moment. No, yeah, yeah, even on dashes. It was insane. He would show his profile and it would just show number one on everything. It was just yeah. the entire list was just number one, number one, number one. And on, it was, P um, I don't know if Falcon had the ball because it was him and Falcon. Oh, I died. It's fine. Okay. That looks like I messed up. But trust me, I still completed the mission somehow. Yeah. You I'm see, trusting like, the process. It actually time saves too. time. Because, well, in live split, technically it saves time, but this RTA, it doesn't. So yeah, here's the little sad one. This is when Icarus actually becomes a human being and not a really annoying person who hates Faith for some reason. What happened to you? Weirdly, in the prototype version, he's a lot nicer. I wish he was nicer in this game. He is just kind of a rude person at the start. I did no. not like him when I played through this game. He was very no. mean to Faith for no reason. Just jealous of him and her and Noah's connection. So we're actually nearing the end of the game now. This is the last stretch, last couple of missions. I know, you've been breezing through this game. This has actually been a really insane run. You've hit I know. pretty much everything that you've gone for, including the things that you didn't even hit in practice, like the benefactor. <laughs> I, know. I know. And I will have everyone know that Meteor had to wake up very early for this run. I There was a high chance that I was late to this. <laughs> I woke up to like 60 notifications. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I had an alarm for quarter to three and three, and I woke up at 20 past four. You should finish what you started. Then I can so. <laughs> Thank you for waking up for us, Meteor. We appreciate it. I'm so glad. It would have been so embarrassing if I missed this. But it was good. I would have had to ask uh, Turgo to step in. 
<laughs> it would not have happened. That would have been it so would not have happened. I don't even know. It would have been funny. I could have tried my best to run any percent, but. Well, in any case, I do appreciate you both being here. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the invite. Oh, we got to see our friend one last time. Yeah, the one last time. Hi, Kitty. Wish us good luck. Good luck, Kitty. I'm at the waypoint. Yeah, the modding tools for this game, while limited, you can do a lot with it, so there are some really cool mods for how to aid gingerbread, um, a lot of people, they have some really cool mods that are actually extending this game's Shout out to you, Meteor. You make a lot of mods, yeah. too. Yeah. I was quite curious to see how many more you can do. This guy made yeah, a mod specifically for me, right when I first started playing the game, because did I wanted the oh, time trial ghost. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I did I do just, that. Yeah. I just hit you up one day and I was like, "Dude, is there any way to remove the time trial ghost?" And you're like, "Nope, but I, I'll get on it. I'll make a mod for it." Yeah. That is so cool. So y'all became friends through Mirror's Edge. Oh no! Yeah. Don't get it twisted. I hate this oh. guy. We are not friends. Oh. <laughs> kidding, kidding. We're great friends. Yeah. Friend I actually met a lot of friends through this game, like Frosty. Who's an incredible runner? Is one of my like closest online friends, and we met through a time trial. He did. I think I he beat my time, and when you someone beats your time, it has a little notification. Oh, fun magnus oh, coming yes. here. I'll see if I can get this. I'm gonna try it because it's so swag. This is a very cool strat. It just goes flying. Oh my god! Yeah, you like launch. But it's really precise. It's a. Unlucky. Because there are two types of mag boosts. One where you start a mag and you still get a weird animation, but a newer version where we down action the very start, but I'm doing it wrong. Okay, we'll try it one more time. Come on. One more time? It's the only mag boost. That's cool. Okay, fine. I'll give up. It's normally it, it's really cool. I actually hit that in every practice run. That is true. <laughs> so I'm annoyed. <laughs> um, but yeah, me and Frosty are really close. He's really cool, and we actually run. We ran a bunch of games together. We're running Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two right now together. Oh, that's fun! It's a co-op. Yeah. Um, the Spec Ops okay. mode is co-op, so we run oh, it together. Okay, nice. And yeah, and also Foey and all these guys. We have like a game night, like basically every day. We play games together or just talk. It's so good. It is a very, very fun community. A lot of great people. Just, yeah, these guys are awake till like 1 a.m. I don't get it. <laughs> well, there are game, some uh, night, owl, <laughs> night owls here, yes. It just helps because I can wake up at like 6 a.m. and they'll still be on and I'll be like, hmm, fun. <laughs> I haven't got <laughs> so work for up, another guys? couple hours. <laughs> game mornings for Meteor. <laughs> Yeah. Guy, wake, guy wakes up at 8 a.m. to play video games with us. Your friend. Oh. <laughs> and where are you uh, from about Sturga? Uh, from the U.S. West Coast. You, West Coast. Okay, same. Best Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, there's, there's like... All of us... There's like three Americans, one New Zealander, and one UK. And so it's always really hard to like schedule the time to play. It it'll work. be like the day... It'll be like tomorrow for... Uh, Foshi, and then it'll be like the morning for me, and it'll be the bit like midnight for them. <laughs> so annoying. The, the Hammer Time website is excellent for that. Yeah, I do that all the time. They don't know how to do it, and every time I say it, they never learn. <laughs> <laughs> I still but haven't I have, learned, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have timestamps every time. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. But it's fine, it's whatever. Okay. Um, oh, we're in. There's a cool trick that I failed every time in practice that maybe I actually hit this time. It's tech that I discovered, so. Hopefully I can do it. But normally when you fall onto a railing, you will get this annoying stumble, but if I Q turn, not like that, I would normally skip that. Anyway. It's very precise though. I don't understand it, and I discovered it. It's a mystery. Didn't seem to be any other options. Okay, it's 
Had a nice calm elevator ride after being yeah. shot at by a bunch of dudes. <laughs> yeah, they, they couldn't turn off this elevator or anything. They just let us go. Up. Where's the elevator music? Can you not hear it? I can hear it. I can hear it. Oh, there. Oh, yeah, I can hear it now. Kind of quiet. It's also the only elevator oh. with music, I think. Oh, okay. I think Keep you might it for right. the end of the run. We're in a fancy uh, building, I guess. True, it is Dogen's apartment. Oh, yes, no, VIP Kruger. elevator. Gabriel Kruger. <laughs> so here there's like an RNG chance to get what we call zombie Kruger, where Kruger looks incredibly like a zombie because he's so pale. Okay, we didn't get it. We skipped it. Thank God. I don't want to see that guy's face. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't lose any time because it's a uh, cutscene. Oh, well, I got like three war runs there. Okay. Wow. But here we're going to look like I'm going to about to just... Okay, I'm going to go back. I'm just going to go a full claw dance, but right. actually, Faith has magnets in her hands that allow her to latch onto drones. Yeah, this game actually has like a weird magnetism. Like, Faith will want to vault everything, grab everything, war and everything, especially like the, the corners of buildings, too. They have the weird yeah. vacuum, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they put a black hole on every corner in the game. So, if you're just kind of looking at it, it'll I'm suck sure you in. Yeah, I think a lot of people. That are really good, familiar with Mirror's Edge One, don't really know how to do it because they just feel like every, they're not they're not in control oh, of faith. I'm sorry. But, yeah. I'm I have also run the first game. But I'm very familiar with both of them. And yeah, it's, they're, they're just completely different. You can't even compare them. They're like their own game. Well, they are their own game. I don't have very many hours in Mirror's Edge One, but it is very fun. I can confirm, even though I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Yeah. Tickets, please. This is if you, I don't know, if you ran the run. This is another one of those like fly tra um fly trap where like it's not like there's nothing really hard, but okay, I'm gonna try to get a boost. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, but it's really punishing. If we fail any of these towers, we will get sent back to the previous tower, and we lose like a minute, and it sucks. But as um, Tigger explained, death checkpoints are now, we get death checkpoints in missions. So, we don't actually get sent back, which is really useful, because the towers are really annoying. So here, we'll go out of the zone, reload. Now this is one of the harder tricks, it's a, a corner wall climb into a wall climb into an annoying Q-turn. Hopefully I can get up. I did. Let's go. Very nice. First try. Very nice. Yeah. First try. Just so you know. And then normally you just walk, you take a zip line, and you'd go through. But we can teleport, so we'll teleport. Thank you, propagations, saving us yeah. so much time on this mission. I think I remember this was like when I when the propagator was discovered, and we were like thinking, "Oh wait, can we use it anywhere else?" This was the first place I looked and did. But the mission checkpoints on this game are at, or. This this mission specifically are absolutely terrible. I had an IRL yeah. friend who ran this game and uh, he nearly rage quit on this mission alone because they kept dying. Oh, wow. Going <laughs> with the terrible yeah. mission checkpoints. And normally, if I were to like die or fail any of these climbs, I would get sent back to where we just were. But... Um. Oh no! <laughs> okay. Oh, thank God. Saved. Saved. Not even close. That's where the magnetism catchy comes in clutch. I'm at the second half. And then we're gonna grab the zip line and just go up. Got it. Classic said she gave us more time, but she had, we actually lost 20 seconds, so. She's lying. We'll do this cool down action C boost again, but this actually saves even more time. Let's go. Stylish. We're gonna just stand around because we want to create the checkpoint because this tower is very easy to fail like that. And normally you just get launched off the side and die, but we didn't. There we go. And then we get this, but normally they give you K sec right after this, and you cannot teleport to a safe house. But I'm gonna hold back, hold coil, and just die. 
compels me to, for whatever reason, Kasek will just go away so we can teleport. They don't need to chase a dead girl. No. Or do they? <laughs> Apparently they do, because she's <laughs> back alive two seconds later, teleporting around the map. Of course. If I were Kasek, I would not even try. I know she's just going to teleport. Somebody just needs to teach the Kasek how to see boost. Mm. Be yeah. Then they'd be a real challenge to escape. That would be, that'd actually be really cool. <laughs> that, good, good mod idea. I don't even know how that'd be possible. Uh, okay, so we're on the final mission. And also, it's a really unique mission. And a really long and annoying mission. It's a bit of a snooze fest. I admit. <laughs> but it, it got, has a really cool wake trick. Up. Yeah. Gotta wake up for the Actually, end of the game. You could probably go to sleep in this. You could probably take a nap. <laughs> I know it's approaching bedtime for, for some of you, I'm sure. Um, so, here we go. Run. So, this, we could go into a train. It's an homage to Chapter 4 in Mirror's Edge 1. So, we have to take that train at the end of Rope Burn and you know, go to New Eden. And this is actually kind of tricky, you know, you have to avoid obstacles. But what if I told you that we could ride a train with obstacles that don't matter, that you can't die in? No That's way. what this game is. I'm gonna not even touch my keyboard. And I don't have to worry about anything because for whatever reason, the obstacles in this just don't matter. This would be a, probably a good time for any questions from the chat, if you had them. We got a little bit. All right, chat. It's uh, approaching the end of the run, so get your questions in mm. if you got them. Oh, this is a nice little, little train ride. Mm. There's going to be quite a bit of uh, waiting on this mission and getting yeah. smacked by signs. All right, well then let me ask you this, Meteor. Um, I know you said, <laughs> I know you said you wouldn't have too much time to um, speed run this game when you go to uh, university, but do you mm -hmm. think that you might have time for like a shorter game? And anything in mind? I have, you know, I have probably run like over like ten games. And I, okay. The thing I have is just, I always dedicate so much time when I get into a game. Maybe. Just for fun, right now, no, nothing right. serious. I still will probably play downtime. this game, but you know, I, cause I recently started a full-time job, but like I've had like no time to like practice or do anything. Like, I just come home, go to sleep, wake up, and immediately start doing Mirror's Edge Callus practice runs for this, and then go to work. And just, but well, after this, I have you can run. Relax. I, I do hold world records in a lot of different games. If if you go on speedrun.com. You probably would be confused why I have world records in Obama, uh, some random Russian games from the early 2000s. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, okay, actually I'm going to try a trick here quickly, because if I hit it, it's kind of fire. More fun out of bounds. Oh, okay, what? There's like, for some reason here. <laughs> Please. Here we go, please. A little map turn to get on some invisible no! geometry. Oh, oh. Dude, where does that tragic. place me? I don't know how far back that places me. Maybe I hit the checkpoint. It should be fine. Oh, I did. Ah, oh, that's fine. Well, um, yeah, I, I like a lot of games. Hey, maybe. I don't think I'll ever stop speedrunning. Yeah, it's hard to, you know? It's like you get a, kind of addicted to it. Mm -hmm. I'm hopefully planning on submitting to ESA summer. So I'm gonna... Oh, yeah, that would be so cool. I'm gonna submit this. I'm gonna submit Obama. And also submit MW2 Spec Ops with uh, Mirror's Runner and also a very talented runner called um, Speedy Eris. Actually, no. That, that's not their name anymore. Eris Ryan. That's it. Eris Ryan. I've reached the top. Um, yeah. that'd be really cool. And I've actually never really shown my face, so actually people 
be able to see what I look like for the first time, which is kind of weird. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's okay to, to be a bit more private about that. But hey, yeah. for a special event, why not? Yeah, yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting. Um, yeah. we, we did also have a question come in from the chat. And I'm curious about your answer. How many hours do you think you would need to put into a speed run like this to be just consistent? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um... I, I this is gonna be a weird answer. I I do think it depends. There are like from what I've like learned being like really like into speeding a lot of games is that like there has to be you have to be very systematic in how you practice to become consistent. There's a lot of people like if you're playing like SM64 like Green Suiji who will literally practice individual segments for hours on end but it pays off and i think if you're starting and you're putting everything in probably like a thousand hours oh you think wow. so okay i don't even have a, a thousand hours game. in this game a okay yeah, game. what about For a full game what about just to like finish a run like how oh. many would you say just to finish run 50 100 you could wow okay so the bar's still pretty high. The, the thing, this game has like <laughs> it has a very like high, you know, level of skill that you like. The skill ceiling is very high. There's a lot Don't of be, intricacies, uh... but it like I it trust me like it also is like pretty easy. If you want to have fun, you can have fun. Yeah, don't be intimidated, chat. No, if, if you're no, you're no, interested no, no. or thinking about it. Like, All the right. thing is that I'm pretty exaggerating. When I started, there wasn't really much resources. I just had to go through, like, watching Balan's runs and asking Balan and asking in the catalyst of every, like, every five minutes. And... <laughs> True. But, I was the same way, bothering people yeah. in YouTube comments. I think now we've got to a point where, like, a lot of the tech understood. Also, yeah, we're pipe -walling. I don't think we said... <laughs> Yeah, oh, let's go. Pretty fancy. We, this hey. is basically the end of the run here. We're going to climb an invisible pole for, what, 2 minutes, 22 seconds? Yep. And uh, it will put us right at the very end of the mission. Yeah, it and perfectly lines up with the final door. And the door, final door is a key checkpoint. As soon as we hit it, ends the mission. Uh, it's weirdly, like, perfect. Very coincidental. Yes. Almost like the devs but, wanted us to skip this entire mission. I know, that's what it feels like. So, Tigger, do you have anything you want to shout out? Talk about anything? Uh, I don't think so. Thanks to you for inviting me. I only got yes. invited like uh, two weeks ago. I didn't really think I'd ever be on a GDQ, so I know. this was very fun. Aww. I don't know how blurry this is. Is it always this blurry? Got something in your eyes, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um. Aim, aim for the heavens. Yeah, I don't you know. I have. I, I was going to announce, it's not really an announcement, but I'm working on this big project for this game. It's just like an IL project, and I've got 15 world records. And I've currently got 14. So hopefully I'm going to release that in about next month. Nice, just you just be, have one more then? Just one more I want to get, and then I'll release wow, it. Wow, But I, so it's going cool. to be, you know, one of the, it's got a cool music. I'm yeah, excited. Bra brag about it, of yeah. course. And I also yeah. you took one of my world records. I'm very mad about it. Did I? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you did. You yeah, did. I did. I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> you got to keep it interesting. Yeah. It's okay. It's... He hasn't submitted um, it yet, so if you look on yeah. speedrun.com, I still got the world record. <laughs> Trust me, guys. Nobody else has a faster so time. Speedrun.com, the source of truth. Yeah, that's what we all use. Yeah, yeah he's gonna run, but it's the... not verified. So you know, for all I know, he cheated. <laughs> Turga's doing the uh, hair flip right now. Oh, yeah? Okay, that's the end. Oh, you time, by the way, actually. <laughs> time. Oh, nice. <laughs> GG. The epic conclusion. Oh, well, what was the time, actually? I didn't even re realize how long it was. Sure, Richard, do you have the time for us? Okay, it's not bad. 133.15, yeah. Excellent run. Awesome run, Media. Good stuff. Yeah, great job, Media. This was so cool. Yeah, it's cool to show this game off again. 
A lot's changed since I lost Runa. Yeah, like, do you have any um, other shoutouts or anything you want to talk about before we wrap up tonight? If you are interested in this game, please join Bowie, Bowie Shop server. I don't know if I'll press the link. Actually, don't know if we can. Can you press links in this? Oh, no. Or yeah, join Richard Catalyst. Posted the posted the speedrun link, so there's, I think the Discord should be there. There's two Discords that. It's, it's weird. Please join any of the servers. You know, everybody's there. Everybody will help you. Um, yeah. I don't know. Check out my channel. Check out Tigger's channel if you want to see some really cool. Run. Not full game runs. Mostly dashes. Not. <laughs> you don't have to do what he says, Cat. You are your own person. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 